following is a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. Talladega, Alabama, the small city along I-20 between Birmingham and Atlanta with a worldwide reputation. Fans from all over are drawn here to the Talladega Super Speedway for a weekend-long celebration of speed. A celebration that carries a high-speed reputation all its own. The scene and spectacle of Talladega means something completely different for the drivers of the NASCAR Nationwide Series. From racing royalty to those looking to make their name, Talladega means 190 mile an hour, door to door, bumper to bumper racing. It defines living on the edge, where slipping over the edge can be devastating. It means thrilling racing seen no place else, capped by the drama of a fantastic finish. Two and two-thirds miles around, four-story tall banking, and a 44-year history of producing the unpredictable. That's the stage for the stars of NASCAR today as they get ready to race at Talladega. And there are plenty of stars, none bigger today than Dale Earnhardt Jr., the sport's most popular driver and a multiple winner here. Danica Patrick always draws a crowd and can contend for the win today. Plenty of other big-name drivers in the field, including the title contenders for the NASCAR Nationwide Series, all looking for their shot at turning into Talladega's victory lane at the end of a hard-fought day, all staring up at the sky and saying, where'd this stray rain shower that wasn't predicted come from? More on that in just a minute. But all getting ready to go at NASCAR's biggest and baddest track, Talladega. It's the once-a-year stop for the NASCAR Nationwide Series at the world's fastest speedway, Green Flag, in just a little while. Hi, I'm Alan Bestwick. Welcome to our live coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series from the world's fastest speedway. Big things happen at NASCAR's biggest track, and for the drivers, that means big stress, 190-mile-an-hour rush hour traffic. But what creates big stress for the drivers produces breathtaking, thrill-a-minute racing for us to watch. In last year's edition of this race, 56 lead changes, a couple of editions of the big multi-car wreck, a car upside down, all before the frantic finish, and we expect more of the same today. We we go to pit road now and hear from two of the big stars in the field beginning with jamie little well the earnhardt name is synonymous with talladega of course dale earnhardt jr has five cup wins here and a nationwide win so junior for the fans watching at home describe the experience here at talladega what makes it unique to you well ain't nothing like it you know it's a, it's unique on itself because it's a big track and you just hold it on the mat and, and try to draft and find find air and, and places that'll pull you up and get you by people and it's uh you know you really don't have to worry about the car handling or or the handling going away you just kind of worry about making the right choices and uh it's kind of it's real simple but at the same time it can be kind of tough they've made some rule changes this weekend to break up that tandem draft and get more back to the pack racing you say that suits your style why well i just always won a lot of races that way and then we went to tandem racing and and seemed like that your your opportunities to win were cut in half because it was you know you were going to have to help somebody all day and and that gave uh, you know you you might help somebody win the race and have to take second just depending upon the circumstances and that just really didn't seem like racing to me so I like you know the pack style and and I'm in control of my own destiny looking out for myself and nobody else so that's the way I want it. All right, Junior will start way back here in 33rd. Doc. With Danica Patrick waving at the fans as we ride by the start finish line or approach the start finish line. Danica, your first trip to NASCAR's largest, fastest, and arguably wildest racetrack. What's your take on the, the Talladega experience? It's a good party. Um, it's good entertainment. Obviously, the uh, the fans come out to watch the race, but then obviously you've got uh, Talladega Boulevard, which is a whole lot of fun. I experienced that last night for a couple of hours and saw some uh, pretty awesome stuff. So uh, it's, I think it's just everything perfect about a sporting event. It's a great party. It's great entertainment. And um, looks like the sun's back out. You know, every time you've raced a nationwide car on a speedway, you've shown remarkable progress. Many people thought you could have won the season opener in Daytona. How confident are you that you've got uh, the experience now and the car to win here today? Well, uh, Tony, Tony Jr. and Junior Motorsports pre prepares really good speedway cars. Obviously, we qualified on the pole at Daytona, and we, uh, we almost had a chance to win right there at the end of the summer Daytona race last year. So um, the speed is there. Uh, for me, it's a comfort zone. You know, it's kind of like IndyCar racing. It's like a high-speed chess match, and you keep your foot in it so as, mu as much as possible. So um, I, I, I don't know. I think we got a really good shot of, of getting the first win at a big track like this, which would be great for, great for GoDaddy and great for the team. And, 
and everybody and would really uh, really set our year right but um, but it's a, it's a crap shoot at the same time on time on some level anything can happen out here and uh, I've been part of those things as well now if you win it today we're gonna be riding along with you and uh, with the onboard camera allowing the fans to share in that historic moment hey thank you for being our in-race reporter Absolutely. I, I'm happy to do it. This is the perfect place to do it. I've got, I think, 2.66 miles around, so no fear of them telling me to pit while I'm talking to somebody. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is one of those tracks that I really look forward to coming to at the beginning of the year, so it's cool to be an in-race reporter. And especially at a track that I feel like we've got a shot to win, it's um, even better. Now, if you want to pose a question to Danica Patrick, log on to ESPN.com, key phrase, in race reporter. There's something about watching you make history in the month of May. A few years ago, we saw you lead the Indianapolis 500 and come all so close to winning it. Good luck today. May's a special month. It's Mother's Day in this month. Danica Patrick trying to get it done at Talladega. Alan? <laughs> Doc, thanks very much. We've been talking about big things happening at Talladega. Another aspect of that theme, the big finish at the end of the day. In this race, the last three straight years and four of the last five, there's been a last lap pass for the win. Sometimes it's been a slingshot draft, and sometimes it's been avoiding the chaos and mayhem to find a way to get to the checkered flag first like this one a couple of years ago. Pretty easy to predict another last lap thriller today, but impossible to predict which driver's name will join this list of recent Talladega winners. A uh, pretty industry, uh, uh, illustrious list, an industrious list <laughs> as well. So I mentioned 56 lead changes last year, a record for most lead changes ever in a NASCAR Nationwide Series race. Wonder what kind of records will play at the end of today's race. Sounds like another wild ride ahead here at Talladega. Ah, Talladega. Y'all know the place where they race door to door to door at high speed on high banks with high danger. Just NASCAR's biggest tease. The track that asks you to dance and then leaves your head spinning. But if you make it to the end, if you survive NASCAR's wildest ride, then the place will embrace you. At least until the next time you dare to dance again. Talladega, it might be round, but it isn't right. ESPN's coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series on ABC, brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Call now to get a quote. Now, a little crawfish boil along Talladega Boulevard in the infield of this giant speedway. What better way to spend a weekend at the world's fastest speedway? Mentioned a minute ago, a stray little shower popped up over the racetrack just as we came on the air, just as quickly. It went away. I mean, it was the only little blip on the radar. It hit the racetrack for about a minute, and it's gone, and we'll be ready to race plenty on time. An introduction of our ESPN NASCAR analysts who call the race with me would not be complete without me telling you of their accomplishments here. Andy Petrie's a five-time winner at this racetrack as a crew chief and as an owner. That blue 55 car, he paid the bills on it and served as a self-appointed hood ornament after Bobby Hamilton drove it to victory lane. As for Dale Jarrett, in addition to his three Daytona 500 wins, he's got a couple of trips to victory lane here at Talladega as well. That race in 2005 being very, very memorable in the career path for DJ. And welcome to our broadcast booth at Talladega. When you think Talladega, besides that win, what do you think? As a driver, it's the most nerve-wracking day that you're going to face the entire year. You're going to be in a pack here today. There'll be some tandem drafting, but it just never goes away. You've got cars around you, in front of you, behind you, so you never really get a break. But on the other side of it, it is a lot of fun to try to maneuver your way through that, get yourself positioned at the end, and if you can outthink and outsmart them at the end, you give yourself a chance to win. Yeah, I think about just how massive, how big this track is and the speed 
speed involved and the unpredictability of what, the way it plays out. Most races, you can kind of tell if you're going to have a chance by about halfway. Here, you never know. I mean, you can if you can stay on the lead lap here, you've got a chance to win this race. For a lot of years, the racing here at Talladega was all the cars in a pack, a pack draft. Then teams began doing this tandem drafting where just two cars locked up bumper to bumper and they raced two by two. Fans said they didn't like it. NASCAR has made some rule changes to try and bring back the pack. Yeah, they changed the rules a little bit for Daytona to try to enhance more pack style racing. They changed it even more here. They closed the grill opening up some more. You can see the little panels there that close it up. And they wanted to try to get away from these two cars that can just push each other with incredible speed once they get mechanically linked up. And you can see here it is worth a lot of speed, but they wanted to try to get away from this, get back to pack style racing and I think it's getting better it's getting more back to that we saw a lot of it at Daytona and right here you can see a big pack yeah and I think we'll see more of the pack racing today very very hot here gonna have a hard time keeping these cars cool yesterday this is what we saw more these teams working on this trying to see how many laps they really can push and keep the engines from running too hot and, of course, when we get down to the end of a race at Talladega, pretty much anything can happen and anybody can win it. Opportunity today for anyone and everyone that's in this race. If you can keep this car, the four wheels going on it and the fenders on it pretty much, sometimes that's not even a requirement, but <laughs> you can have, give yourself a chance. I always like to say at the end of this race, you need to be moving forward. You want to find somebody that has a fast race car that can help you get there. You can have that chance to win. And even if you don't have the fastest car, you, you can use the momentum to get to the front. If you can time that momentum, them to start making your way to the front you can get there but you, this is what can happen at Daytona we saw them all up front the momentum was coming from behind and the track just closed up an incredible finish and we see how many cars involved here 10 cars involved in this crash count them up this is turn four final lap one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then there's James Busher, <laughs> who finds his way through the mayhem and the chaos and picked up an opportunity win his first NASCAR Nationwide Series victory at, of all places, Daytona. We could see something like that happening again today. Great mix of drivers in this field, from the stars of the sport like Earnhardt Jr. and the Bush Brothers and so on, to over a dozen drivers who've never run in a Nationwide Series event here before. Experience win? Uh, experience is a great thing to have here, but I'm not sure that's the determining factor here today. Having a good race car and willing to use it at the end, I think Ricky Stenhouse might be the man. I said it was unpredictable, but I'm going to predict Kyle Busch to win this thing. I think experience will pay off at the end, and Kyle is such a great pusher. I watched him in practice. He's able to push for many laps, and he's going to work with his brother, Kirk. I think he pushes Kirk to the tri-oval and then hangs him out and passes him to the finish line. Be another favorite that fans are cheering for today. Maybe not a favorite in the race, but a favorite number, Dave. You know, Alan, Dale Earnhardt drove a black number three to victory lane in eight of his ten wins here at Talladega. This, the final memorable 76th victory of his stellar career. The owner of that car, Richard Childress. And now Childress' grandson, Austin Dillon, races his own black number three here at this track. With Austin now. Austin, what does the history of the three here mean for you as you take on Talladega? Well, I think it means a lot everywhere, especially Talladega, just because the, the last race was won here by Dale. And uh, I really like to be able to run it, and I like running it out front. So if we can put it out front today, I think we can make the, the stands raise up, and that'll be fun. So the Advocare Chevrolet was really fast there staying in practice. Uh, we'll just stick it out front, hopefully, here, and uh, see what it does. Trying, trying to keep these motors cool, and that's one of the pop pop, having him back there. He, he's a motor guy, so that'll be good to have him on our side. Can you keep it cool both in the pack and with tandem racing, or do you have to choose one or the other? Well, t truthfully, I think as hot as it is today, even in the pack, you're going to be worrying about temperature. So uh, it's just going to be, uh, you're going to monitor it all day and uh, take care of it. And then at the end, uh, go for broke, let it uh, eat. The legacy of the three strong here as Austin Dillon makes his first nationwide series start at Talladega. Mike Massaro. A week ago, Kurt Busch went to victory lane driving a car owned by his brother. Today, he tries to beat him. I would imagine there's still going to be an element of teamwork here between you and your brother today. How do you plan to approach this race? Well, we got to work our way up from this starting position. You know, with our HendrickCars.com Chevy, we don't have the points, so we'll come up and work our way through, and hopefully by a third of the race through, we're teamed up with the monster car. Kyle and I will be pushing. We're pitted together. So the whole sequence today is to stick together as brothers and see if we can come out on top of a restrictor plate race. You have lots of experience here at Talladega behind the wheel of the Sprint Cup car. 22 starts, but this will be your first start here at this track in a nationwide car. How's it different? 
You know, it's just uh, a little bit different with the draft because of the spoiler size, the lack of horsepower, and then uh, the cooling system is a little bigger with the nationwide cars versus the cup cars. But, you know, Kyle's uh, the all-time winningest nationwide guy, so teaming up with him, that's the best uh, chance that I've got at winning today. Good luck this afternoon. Thanks a lot. Alan, Kurt Busch starts 31st, but he did have the fastest car in final practice, so he's got a car capable of getting to the front in a hurry. He will be fun watching come up through that traffic in the opening laps here at Talladega. Always beautiful views. Looking down on this massive track in our aerial coverage today, brought to you by DirecTV. Only DirecTV gives you dedicated driver channels, so you'll never miss a second of your driver's race. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. We're moments from going racing. What will the world's fastest speedway leave us buzzing about today? The rolling hills of eastern Alabama are a peaceful place, green, serene. But tucked in along that calm countryside, hides a beast. For a weekend, it emerges. The people converge to cheer the beast and those who challenge it. It's time to change the landscape. It's time for Talladega. Alabama, a name carried around the world through the exciting competition at Talladega Super Speedway, where the NASCAR Nationwide Series goes racing momentarily. Because of rain here on Thursday, qualifying was canceled, so the field lined up according to the NASCAR rule book. That's basically by points, putting the top two in the championship, Elliott Sadler and Ricky Stenhouse Jr., side by side on the front row. Richard Childress Racing has accomplished a lot of the Nationwide Series, Jamie, but never won at this track. Can Elliott Sadler do it today? Perhaps he could. He's starting here in the number one spot, talking to his crew chief here. Elliot, I know there's a lot of unpredictability at this track, but what is your plan to start this race? Well, I tell you what, this is um, this race is kind of a wild card race, Jamie, as you know, and, and with the new rules that we have on the radiators, we really don't know how hot our engines are going to be, so we're really going to play it by feel. Right now, we want to stay up front, and we want to keep that track position, so if anything happens, it happens uh, happens behind us, but uh, we're definitely going to try to take care of this one main financial car and try to be there at the end. This race is so chaotic a lot of times, and you, you get bit by the bug sometimes here, but we're just going to try to play a good, safe race, save our engine temperatures as much as we can, Try to go get them at the end. The fans at home keep hearing us talk about how steamy it is and how your engines are getting hot. What about you guys behind the wheel? What are you doing to stay cool today? I just I hydrated a lot uh, this morning and, and yesterday, and we're used to it. I've been doing this a long time, so my body's pretty seasoned as far as concerned. It's not too bad today, a little cloud cover. Usually the first hot race of the seasons always seem hotter than the rest of them, but you know our bodies and all get you know get used to it. This is what we train and work out and, and, and sweat for during the week to, to get ready for these hot races. So just want to you know take care of my guys on pit stops get um, good communication with Luke good teammate to teammate work and uh, make it to the end I think the car that's got all four wheels rolling in the same uh, direction at the end of the race I have a good chance of winning it and hopefully we'll be there looking for his first win Alan Jamie thanks and Sadler's rival for the nationwide series championship Ricky Stenhouse jr. from nearby Mississippi will start on the front row with him separated by just two points two positions on the racetrack in the championship both with two wins so far in this season before we begin today's race we go trackside for the opening ceremony at this time please stand and remove your hats as the Alabama Army National Guard presents our nation's colors here to offer today's invocation is the Minister of Missions at Eastmont Baptist Church and Alabama Raceway Ministries volunteer, Reverend Billy Dickey. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day you've given us. May we honor you in all we say and do. We ask for your protection over the men and women that serve in our armed forces, along with today's drivers, crews, officials, and race fans. But more importantly, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross to save us of our sins and eternal life. It's in the name of my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, here to sing today's national anthem, please welcome Curb Records recording artist and Alabama native, Tim Ducker. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts 
we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner it wave. Time to race at Talladega. This last moment before the drivers climb aboard, one to share with family, friends, team, or alone in their thoughts. We call racing after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Somehow, a driver must keep their head on straight. They must ignore banking that is too high, a track too long, speeds too fast, and danger lurking around every too tall turn. And accept that goal number one isn't to win, it's to survive. Just getting to the checkered flag is so difficult at the biggest, baddest track in NASCAR, where the command to start engines is moments away at Talladega Super Speedway, the once-a-year visit by the NASCAR Nationwide Series to the world's fastest speedway. So we mentioned uh, as we came on the air and updated a little bit ago that one stray shower that came across, I mean, it rained for about a minute and a half uh, across this racetrack. It did drop a decent amount of moisture in that brief time, but it's some 87 degrees out right now, and the rain has stopped. They've got the jet drying equipment out on the racetrack, and they're drying very quickly, as you can see, the racing surface, but they do have to get the last of that moisture evaporated and dried up before you can send these cars racing off at 190 miles an hour. Yeah, here you use up every inch of this racetrack, so it won't take long to get that, as you said, with the temperature here. Momentary delay in the command to start engines gives us a chance to talk to a couple of more drivers before they set off on their journey. Doc? And I'm with Brad Kozlowski, 2010 Nationwide Series champ. And Brad, this place has been good to you. Two wins, your first cup win in a wild finish, and the first win in a Penske car here in 2010, another wild finish. What is it about you and this Talladega Super Speedway? Well, I don't know. It's, uh, Talladega has just been good to me. And, uh, you know, some of it's good luck. And I like to say some of it is recuperating from all the bad luck I've had at Daytona, which is kind of the sister track. So, uh, you know, it's funny how that all works out. We're ready to have another good day here today with the uh, discount tire Dodge. Uh, we had a great run going at that tone it up second and uh, I'd like to get that one more spot uh, here at Telde. A lot of rule changes. The uh, driver's saying it may be pack racing. It may be tandem racing. What do you think uh, is going to happen today? Both. <laughs> I think you're going to see both and it's going to be a mixture of everything and uh, you know whatever one you like you, if you look hard enough you're going to see it. So uh, I think the nationwide cars are going to put on a great race today. Hey, good luck to you. Thank you. Back in Daytona he pushed teammate Sam Hornish to the lead. Today he hopes Sam Hornish can push him to the win. Alan? Would not be the first time that the Michigan native has gone to victory lane here at Talladega Super Speedway. Doc, he's got a Sprint Cup win and two years ago in this nationwide series race. In that red, white, and black 22 car pushed to the front. Ahead of all the mayhem happening behind him. And Brad Keselowski scored a win at Talladega Super Speedway. That was in 2010. The live scene at Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama, getting ready for today's NASCAR Nationwide Series race. The Aaron's 312 getting set to go on a steamy afternoon. Temperature some 87 degrees. What was about a 20% chance of a shower? Well, we got the 20% briefly, but the track is quickly drying. It is not raining anymore. There's nothing on the radar. And NASCAR is saying in less than five minutes, they will give the command to start engines and roll this field out onto the racetrack. Gives us the opportunity to squeeze in another quick break so we come back and see as much of this thrilling edge of your seat racing as we possibly can show you. The engines fire at Talladega next.
anticipation building for the start of the NASCAR Nationwide Series race at Talladega. Command to start engines coming up in just a little while. This is a day where some of the underfunded underdog teams with experienced drivers have a chance to kind of get into the mix. Kenny Wallace, a good example. Yeah, don't count anybody out of winning this one, and this is one I think could be a dark horse. Kenny Wallace in this 99 team. It's basically his 09 team he was driving before, and I think he'll have a shot. Kenny's brother Mike has a reputation for being terrific in the draft. Yeah, he's starting back in the 19th spot today, but don't expect him to be there very long. People like to hook up with this man because he knows how to go to the front. Then there's Joe Nemechek, a two-time winner here. He almost won this race last year. And he has won here quite a few times, so he'll be a good pick. So anybody's race, pretty much, though at the end, experience can tend to win out. That doesn't mean it has to win out, but it can. Uh, the little rain shower that has delayed the start ever so slightly has gone away. The track drying is just about finished up, and the drivers are aboard their cars for what's going to be a stressful, hot, grueling day behind the wheel in the 190-mile-an-hour rush hour traffic that is the draft at Talladega. We need those famous words right now. Race fans, it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command to start the engines, please welcome back our Grand Marshals for today's race. From the Wounded Warrior Project, Marine Corps Lance Corporal Mitchell Underwood, Army Specialist Casey Wade, Marine Corps Sergeant James Rivera, and Army Specialist Andrew Cochlin. Drivers, start your engines! All the dead drivers are headed home, so they're probably just normal three laps here. M4, got a copy, Josh. You're running, everything good. Time to race at Talladega, and during the day, we'll get the chance to check in with our ESPN in-race reporter. Danica Patrick has never raced at Talladega before, but she does have a few races worth of experience at Daytona. Where the racing style is similar, will seven be the lucky number today? Back after this from our ABC stations. flying around Talladega Super Speedway. And the race hadn't even started yet. <laughs> uh, the Talladega Municipal Airport literally right behind the backstretch of the racetrack. One of the jets that was in the flyover doing a little touch and go back there. And the cars rolling onto the racetrack to begin three parade and pace laps before the green flag to start today's race. Our ESPN in-race reporter today Driver of that neon green number seven car, Danica Patrick, in her first Talladega try. Dale. Danica, Dale Jarrett, the SBN, you have a copy? Copy. Danica, we'll go right to our mailbag, and Cody from Prescott, Arizona, is asking you, ready, to, uh, as you, how confident are you feeling about the t uh, tandem drafting, and do you prefer pushing or being pushed? <laughs> One or the other, they both have their pros and cons. When you push, you can't see, but you're a little safer from a potential spin. And when you're uh, being pushed, you at least can see, but, you know, the, it's in someone else's hands a little bit. So pick your poison. Yeah, I understand that. You ran most of your practice with Cole Witt yesterday, but you did get out with your owner, Dale Jr. Is there a plan for the two of you to hook up at some point today? You know, I think that uh, I think you're going to end up picking up whoever whoever you find out here. But you always have your sort of people that you feel the most comfortable with. So uh, if Dale and I are near each other, then I'm sure that we'll be very comfortable running together. And uh, you know, I think it's fun. I think some of the <laughs> I think the fans sometimes want to see that kind of thing. So, uh, but it mostly depends on who you're near. Well, I'm sure the fans would love to see that. So let's fast forward to the end of the race, last lap. You and Dale Jr. are battling it out for the win. What happens in your mind? Uh, you know, uh, that's a tough one. You're putting me in a really tough spot, but I think it's uh, it's going to come down to where you are. If you, you know, if you're out front and Dale's pushing me, then there's a chance that he's going to get me, and vice versa. But the Junior Motorsports race in the Nationwide Series, so maybe he wants to see his team win. That would be 
up for that. I'd be up for my first first win in NASCAR. So, you know, if you want to go float that idea to him, uh, maybe maybe you've got some pull there. All right. Thanks for talking. I'll see if I can work that out with him. Have a great day. Appreciate that. Thank you. Might take a little bit for Danica and Dale Jr. to get together in the draft if that were to happen, because Danica's starting 17th and Dale Jr.'s back in 33rd. He is back in third there. Let's talk to him. Dale Jr. Dale Jarrett, you have a copy? Yes, sir. Hey, man, I was just talking to Danica about the possibility of the two of you on the last lap of the race. It comes down to you battling for the win, what was going to happen in her mind, and she kind of thought that you might like to see for Junior Motorsports you pushing her across the line and her winning. Well, we both drive Junior Motorsports cars, so either way, it's a win for me, but I'd, I'd like to win it for helmets and our team. We work pretty hard going through tech, working on this car, getting it ready, bringing it to the track. It's 90 degrees out. These guys have been working for two days trying to get it ready, so we're going to go for the win. I know you love racing here as much as the fans love watching you. How are you feeling about today's race? I feel good. I mean, uh, I always enjoy running in a nationwide series. They're a great partner for the series and uh, been a great partner to ours. It's, it's a lot of fun, a lot of young talent here. And uh, it's fun to race against these guys and see what they got, see who's coming up. And, uh, you know, you get to work with your family a little bit too. A lot of great things about it. All right, Dale, thanks for talking with us. You have a great day out there. Thank you. Well, what happens behind the wheel, what happens on the racetrack, very important. Dale Jr. mentioned the pit crews, what happens on the pit lane, always very important as well. And the team selecting their stalls for this race kind of gives us a couple of interesting things to think about. Yeah, they pick their pits by the way they qualify. They didn't qualify here. It was by points. You see Elliot Sadler does have that first stall. But this is an opportunity for these teams that are planning to run together. We see uh, a lot of these teams that are pretty obvious picks to be running and working together. We see 7 and 88 are pitted on pit road with about five cars in between them. This is an opportunity for them to get split up when they make stops, if they make them under green especially. Uh, so we'll look for, to see how they get back together. We, uh, we see also if one of these teams has a problem, they're going to have to find another teammate, and he would probably be Dale Jr. He's on the other end of pit road. He's the second car, second pit end, and it'd be uh, kind of hard for these teams to get together coming off pit road. The ideal situation would be to pit together if you plan to run together, and that's what we see with Kirk Bush and Kyle Bush right here with an opening, too. So this is this the best-case scenario to try to work together all day and try to push each other and see if they can win this race. Yeah, Kurt mentioned that when we uh, talked a little while ago, how they were pleased that those circumstances worked in their favor. We'll see what happens on the pit lane and how it plays into the drafting pairings. Speaking of on the pit lane, Mark Hollywood Armstrong is going to change front tires for Brian Scott in the 11 car for Joe Gibbs Racing today. Now, now, Hollywood, the racing on the track at Talladega is a little unique. What happens on pit road can be unique, too. It's very unique down here, fans. One thing about it is a car hits pit road. You don't know if you're going to do four tires, two tires, maybe gas only, and what adjustments you might make. But one thing that's not going to change today is the importance of the fuel. These gas men up and down pit road have to get the car fuel, full of fuel, and be ready to go to the end of the race. We're excited. It's extremely hot down here, and we're looking forward for a good race for the Dollar General, Toyota, Joe Gibbs Racing, guys. Hollywood, it's a hot day today. Make sure you keep hydrating now. Look at him bundled up in all of his safety gear. Have a safe day. Yeah, he's talking about tires. Tires are optional here at Talladega, but gas is mandatory. <laughs> Got to have yeah, a gas. Yeah. We have some terrific high-definition onboard views for you today to see all the action in the draft at Talladega. Elliot Sadler with our nationwide insurance cameras starting on the pole. We heard from Austin Dillon earlier, the AdvoCare camera. Here's Dale Earnhardt Jr. with the Chevy on board, coming from deep in the pack. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the Ford EcoBoost camera, is going to be on the front row. Our in-race reporter, Danica Patrick, with the GoDaddy.com camera. We heard from Brad Keselowski. He's carrying our nationwide insurance camera today, Brad's office for the day. Kyle Busch, defending winner of this race with the Goodyear on board. And Kenny Wallace, representing American Ethanol today. There is Kenny, all set and ready to go. While we work these pace laps and they continue, let's get some final stories on pit road before the green flag. Here's Jamie Little. 
Well, Alan, one driver who's been knocking at the door of victory lane here at Talladega is Joey Logano. In three starts, his worst finish is third. Now, he's in the 18 carts, the same team that Kyle Busch won right here at Talladega with one year ago. So what's his plan today? Well, it's not to look for a teammate. It's to find Elliott Sadler, who starts just ahead of him. The two worked together on their tandem draft yesterday in practice, and they loved their plan. Mike Massaro? Thanks, Jamie. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. enters the afternoon just two points off the championship lead. However, he knows all too well the hazards of restrictor plate racing. After all, Stenhouse crashed out of each of the last three restrictor plate races. For him, today is all about finding balance. Balance between being cautious and still trying to find a way to win. The six team very confident they can go to victory lane today, but they don't want to throw away all the work they put in since February. Dave Burns. Kyle Busch starts this race in the 12th position in the 54 car. Kurt Busch in the 1, 31st. Oh, brother, that's a problem because these drivers want to work together today in the tandem draft. The good news is that when they're on pit road, their pit stalls are right next to each other. The crew chiefs will talk to their drivers over the radio, monitor each other, and then be able to give hand signals, a thumbs up, a thumbs down, a nod of the head, because they're right next to each other, to let their plan work out and stay together till the end of the race. Dr. Jerry Punch? You know, most racetracks, so what happens here on pit road uh, determines who wins and loses the race. Not here at Talladega. You're only going to make three stops here and so these guys are going to be watching and waiting and folks what a great watch the last two times these cars have raced here 89 lead changes and 27 cars in a garage area with dns alan what a great watch we are racing at talladega 312 miles 117 laps around the world's fastest speedway changes designed to bring back the pack and break up the tandem drafting play out on this hot boiling day well, you can already see just this first lap the two cars on the outside lane with Logano and Elliott Sadler still touching each other but offset quite a bit but Stenhouse lost contact with Kevin Harvick right off the bat yeah and all you have to do is get uh, just detached from that bumper and it dramatically slows your speeds Elliott Sadler in the two We'll lead lap number one. It's Joey Logano in the 18. Second, 38 is Brad Sweet, one of more than a dozen drivers making his first ever drive at Talladega in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. I don't know exactly what Hornish is doing there. He's all by himself in that high lane. Hornish in the yellow 12. Looks like Hornish might be going to the back, trying to stay out of trouble. I think Kevin Harvick might have been in that plan also. I, thought, I wondered at first if Harvick might be having some kind of issue, but I think he just got himself in a position that he wants to be. Try to wait till towards the end of this. Probably is because there's his Penske teammate, Brad Kozlowski, in the 22, headed for the back. I didn't want to leave him hanging there, but it didn't work out. Yeah, 10-4. Kevin Harvick's radio. I think that plan might have been a little bit in what he's talking about. He was on the bumper of Ricky Stenhouse. Elliott Sadler obviously drives. He wanted him to get that point for leading the lap and really not help Ricky Stenhouse's cause. He's trying to win this championship. A little politics going on in this opening lap. Austin Dillon in the three. Seventh place, Kevin Harvick, 33, is his teammate at Childress Racing, but again... They are separated by the Daytona winner, James Busher, in the 30. See another car there, the 43 up in that front pack. With those four, Mike Lynette did a fantastic job at Daytona. Expect to see him up in the mix all day. Those who started toward the back, working their way toward the front. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that yellow and blue number five car, just ahead of him, the one car, Kurt Busch. Kurt started in 31st place. Dale Earnhardt Jr. started 33rd. These drivers have a lot to do here today besides just the nerve-wracking part of driving here. They really are going to have to keep an eye on that temperature gauge. Yeah, you can see the leaders. You see how Logano is offsetting his car so much on the back bumper of Elliott Sadler. Now, they're getting some help. That tandem push is really 
fairly effective like that, but not as effective as, as if they were nose to tail with nothing uh, showing on the, the, the grill of the back car. But that's the way they can keep doing it longer, is keep it offset. Running with us, non-tandem. They're keeping up, brother. I mean, one car length. You're not leaving them at all. To make sure Joey knows that, we might not have to do this. I don't just get in line here and ride. 10-4. Take care of his temps right here. Hopefully he's looking at them. Well, with a big run in the tandem draft, Kevin Harvick, 33, pushed James Busher in the 30 up near the lead. And then they separated in the draft. And they couldn't get back together because that slot where Busher was trying to get in behind Harvick was closed up there by Brad Sweet. Clear high, clear high. Got two coming up behind you quick. Coming inside, coming inside. It was about four and a half laps that Joey Logano was able to push Elliott Sadler. Now they had to make the switch so we could get so they could get the 18 car cooled down. And let's Harvick take the lead. Harvick 33, Brad Sweet 38, Michael Annette 43. And you can see the way they were doing that though. They really weren't getting away from anyone. And that's what Elliott Sadler was talking about there. If they weren't going to do it, there's no sense in trying to do that if it wasn't going to be a big advantage. He was having to pull out to keep from being able to do that, get too much air to the front to get away. Here comes Kyle Busch, 54, pushing James Busher in the 30. Austin Dillon in the three with Joe Nemechek in the 87. Mentioned Joe is being the threat to win this race. Now this is the most effective way to make it work. You saw how they were nose to tail. That's really fast. They can only do that for a short time though with these new rules. Cars get extremely hot and it's a really hot day today. So it's gonna be hard to do that very long. Familiar sight at Talladega, different circumstances. The three to the lead. Austin Dillon to the point. The car third in line, that red and white 24 car. That's John West Townley. He was a regular here a couple of years ago in the Nationwide Series. Hasn't been around, but making the most of this run today. That is so close. Whoa. See Junior in that shot. He's gained 26 spots since the race started. Only six laps. Seven laps now come to the line. Three wide, four wide. It looks like the last lap, the way they're driving here. That's what we'll see all day long. It's just the run that you get. You want to stay in the throttle as much as you can. Make use of that time that you're putting, that you're you're getting that push or uh, making the push for the driver in front to try to get yourself back into some fresher air. Dale Jr. pushing James Busher. Let's see if they get all the way to the front. I believe they've got enough of a, a head of steam here to make it happen. They haven't been hooked up so long that they, the five car should be running hot yet. So. D. Jr. getting him to the front. Now what will he do once he gets him there? Suggesting he might abandon the uh, push position in the draft and go for the lead? Yeah. Maybe the not this lap. Not this lap. The last lap he would, for sure. <laughs> 30 cars in the lead pack. They got a big enough lead now they could swap positions and still keep the lead. Yeah, but that closed quickly once they made oh, that. Yeah. Once he pulls out of line. about the Wallace brothers. They've teamed up in a tandem draft. That silverish car is Kenny. Right behind him in the black and yellow is Mike. Third and fourth place for the moment. Both of these drivers excellent at this type of racing, so you had to know this was going to take place. See Mike trying to get some air to his, but now they've not attached anymore. You can see the pack starting to gain on them from behind. Dark 
Sutton and ducking around in traffic. Kurt. Remember he said it's going to take about a third of the race to catch up to brother Kyle. Well, that's Kurt in the one. That's 10 laps it took. And Kyle in the 54. They lost contact here, though. Like Kyle got a big run through the middle. And that's your responsibility as that front driver. You're getting that big push right then. But it, it feels good at the time. But next thing you know, you're going to be in trouble as the, somebody else that's teamed up comes flying past. At a, uh, I don't want to call it a normal, but at, a, at a, a race that's not a drafting race like like Talladega or Daytona, the start is tense and a few laps in, things maybe settle in. Is there ever a settling in for a driver in a race like this? Never gets to the point that you can just kind of take a breath. You can see these drivers now. They've got cars all around. You have to be paying attention to, to everything that's going on. Even when you're in the, the tandem drafting, you, you, as the driver behind, you can't see a thing. So it is even more tense at that time for you. Our broadcast today available in Spanish by activating the SAP button on your television presented by ESPN Deportes. Just underway at Talladega Super Speedway, James Busher and Dale Earnhardt Jr. up front. The NASCAR Nationwide Series live at Talladega. And a scramble for the lead in the early going. The Wallace brothers, Mike Wallace, 0-1. Kenny Wallace, 99, pushing to the front. 18, Joey Logano. Two, Elliott Sadler, coming by. You see Kenny Wallace push Mike all the way up through there, but look, looked like they had done it for a while, and the 99 car probably got hot, and he had to get out of there. Yellow car, Dale Jr., and back of the picture there, black with green trim, James yeah, Busher were the leaders when we went to break. They have been overtaken by this group after they separated in the pack, separated in the draft. Position swap, Sadler and Logano executing that nicely. Good switch, good switch, you got two right behind you. The longer we go, the more often they're gonna have to switch because they're, they're really not cooling down a lot when they make that switch. They're not going all the way back down as low as they'd like. They can only get to maybe 220 as a low. And so 220 to 250 is about the range that they can run. They have to switch a lot more often as we go here. One of those drivers with not much experience up front there, Ryan Truex in that 20. I talked with him a little bit this morning about this. He said the tandem drafting was something that was different for him. He was trying to get used to that, but he had a great time in practice, was looking forward to the day. Putting it to good use right now. Up there with Joe Nemechek. Truex, 20 years old, from New Jersey. Let's check down a pit lane, Dave. With Tony Erie Jr., who is a crew chief for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Of course, this race is not very old, Pop, so there's a lot left to discover, but we were watching Jr. be the pusher for a number of laps. There looked like maybe 10 laps. Is that something you were anticipating he could do? Uh, that's what we worked on to do. Uh, we come here, uh, knew we was going to have heating problems with that small hole in the front, so... We worked hard on our cars in the wind tunnel to get the most air we could fit close to them. And, uh, you know, that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. So, uh, you know, held my Chevrolet's fast today. Uh, it's going to be that way all day long. He's going to go to the front, and then he'll go back. And that's just like the race in Daytona looks like. So uh, we'll see what we got here later on in the race. Thanks, Bob. Obviously entertaining to watch Junior any time. And as you saw, guys, he was able to be that uh, car behind without overheating for quite some time. Pop sound very confident in their ability to keep their car cool, and that's going to be, I think, the key to winning this race is how long you can run behind and push without overheating. Three wide for the lead. The Bush brothers on the outside. Kyle, 54, Kurt, 1. Let's call this a hybrid pack. It's a pack of cars, and they're all, about half of them are tandem <laughs> racing. Yeah, but even being in these packs uh, like this, they're having a hard time keeping these cars cool. You have to make sure that you get plenty of clean air to that radiator to, to cool these down, or you're going to be in serious trouble. And once it heats up to a certain point, you're going to have a difficult time with the temperature here today of getting it back cool. So the Bush brothers to the point. Michael Annette, 43, runs third. Single file, Kevin Harvick is fourth in the 33. Doc? Yeah, Alan, Kevin Harvick led the race and then suddenly dropped like a rock back to 24th position. Here's what he said on the radio that happened a moment ago. Too hot. I, I got to get out of the pack here. I'm 260, 270. Just got to take care of it here. I've already blown it off twice. I learned a lot right there. Did you see those three cars pushing, Billy? When we were doing that, I mean, it was big. 
by blowing it off, what he means is the pressure relief valve, and now he's under pressure on the racetrack, but he thinks it's just getting too hot and blowing water out. Remember, these are five-gallon radiators. It takes a long time to get hot, but once it gets hot, Andy, it takes a long time to cool down. Now he's on his way back to the front. Yeah, it does, Doc, because they still, in, in the pack, they don't have real clean air when they're running in the middle of the pack, so it still takes a while for those things to cool off unless you're the leader and have that clean air. But that, that blow-off valve, that pop-off valve he's talking about is really just a fancy oh, radiator cap. Trouble might be what you see right here. This is Johanna Long, and that smoke out of the exhaust tells I me that she's cool probably off, lost all the water and, that, and is overheated. The 19-year-old, one of the many drivers making her Talladega debut in the Nationwide Series, but is not going to get all the laps she was hoping for today. Yeah, and as a driver, your only way of knowing this is there's a vent tube that comes out, and it will blow the water. When it start, gets too hot and the water starts coming out, it comes out on your windshield. And then so what you know that. What happens when you run out of water, your temperature gauge actually goes right. down. You think you're okay. You think everything's fine because you're not overheating. Yeah. Well, the reason you don't see that is because there's no water to read on the gauge. Yeah, it's not blowing any out, and your temperature gauge doesn't show any, so... Next thing you see is just what we saw with Johanna Long. A little windshield tear off flapping around on the 88 car. Yeah, and that could be, it's not a bad thing for Junior, if, or, or I'm, I'm sorry for Cole Whip right there as you see that. We saw this yesterday in practice, but that gets on someone else's grill when it finally does come off of there. Then you could have a serious problem in a hurry. Yeah, that'd be done quickly. Yeah, it does have adhesive on the bottom of it. Caution. Caution is out. Wave them off. Caution is out. Wave them off. They threw that caution for that 70 car blowing up. They're probably going to check for oil because she did blow that engine. Block. That's that's very, very um, psychic of you because that's exactly the reason I've just told now for the caution. Awesome. Okay. So I get it right every now and then. Expert of you is probably the better <laughs> word. <laughs> First caution of the race, 21 laps in, just over 50 miles into the event. Uh, let's talk pit strategy because it's different here than it would be at most places where tires versus fuel is concerned. Well, track position two is not so critical here because it's going to change so much all through the race. You're not really trying to get, I mean, you don't want to lose it. Or you want to try to make the best stop you can, but they're going to pit, put tires on maybe. They'll put fuel in for sure. Tires are not going to help a lot, but if you got to put fuel in and you've got time, you might as well put tires on. I'd say a lot of two-tire stops we'll see today. Right now, especially, this is only 21 laps in. It'll take about a can of fuel. They can put a couple of tires on in that amount of time. So I expect to see a lot of two-tire stops and fill it up with fuel. Not an unusual thing in a, in a race lately at Talladega where you're planning a three-stop race where you'll change rights, then lefts, then rights. And there's one other thing. Some of these teams might start topping these things off with water because they don't really know, have a gauge in there to say how much water they have. And some of them have lost some water in the draft. So if we see someone making an especially long stop on the pit lane, that might be what's going on. Could be. We saw Matt Kenseth do that in the Daytona 500. His car was spewing a little more water than most, and so they wanted to make sure it was full. They made a pit stop and filled it up. Some 87 degrees today at Talladega and inside those race cars that are now all up to temperature and that heat all throughout the race car. It's not your your comfy seat in the office. No, it's not that. And, and the design of these cars is to keep air out of there. So it's extremely hot inside today. Showed you earlier how the Bush brothers had selected pit stalls next to each other on the pit lane. Now we get to see how it works out. Dave? And that plan coming together as we talk to you about, they will pit together. They will both take right side tires and a can of fuel. Kyle, no complaints about his car whatsoever. Kurt's car just a little bit snug, but good in traffic. Mike? James Busher in the 30 car, very happy with his car, especially in clean air. The call from his crew chief, Trent Owens, four tires and fuel on the 30 car. They complete their work now as we go to dock. Same with Kevin Harvick, four tires. They lost half a tank of fuel, so they're going to have two cans of fuel going in, so all four tires on. We'll see what happens. Down pit road with Cole Witt. Jamie. And Cole Witt, four tires as well. He said, wait for us. We have to get this thing full as possible. We're just going to take our time here. We will be able to drive back up through the front. Remember, trying to keep their eyes here on the five and the seven car. So there's some of the variety of strategies on the pit lane. 
And a variety of strategies being played not on the pit lane as championship leader Ricky Stenhouse Jr. stayed on the racetrack to lead a lap and collect the bonus point toward the championship. He'll probably lead a lap sometime today, but he can guarantee he'll lead one there. So first caution is out at Talladega Super Speedway. The action fast and furious on the pit lane. Here's Hollywood Armstrong. Talladega Super Speedway, a lap away from the restart from the first and only caution of today's NASCAR Nationwide Series, Aaron's 312 so far. Our in-race reporter for the day, Danica Patrick, comes off the first set of pit stops, pretty much up toward the front of the field, DJ. Danica Dale Church, you have a copy? Are we eight? position of I. Right there, pull up on the outside of that third. busy there trying to get all sorted out where the restart position should be and just so you know we do seek the team's permission before yeah. we go to talk to our in-race reporter yeah, that, but sometimes things get busy especially right. on these restarts and lineups you want to make sure that you're in the right spot you were watching the sprint cup race last weekend yeah <laughs> exactly uh kyle bush and kurt bush remember we saw them pit together well, Kyle's up the front of the pack. Kurt is going to be at the back of the pack. Why? Well, we'll show you what happened at the tail end of his pit stop. Watch that fuel can. Trying to get that last drop of fuel before he takes off. These two cans are a little harder to unplug than the old style cans used to be. Got to pull it just about straight out to get it to pull to disconnect. Well, he started the race back in 31st, made his way up to the lead. Now he's going to restart 36th. Don't think you'll have any problem getting there. Got a good car there beside him. You see Ricky Stenhouse Jr. at the tail end of the field as well. He stayed out to lead a lap. Would have been at the back of the pack anyway the by pitting on that second lap of caution. But then when he left the pit lane, he made a mistake. Yeah, you have to stay below that yellow line all the way to the back straightaway here. Even under caution. You see Sam Hornish right there in front of him. That's the proper way of doing it. Doubled up for the restart. Kyle Busch, 54, black car, inside lane, is the race leader. That's Dale Jr. outside of him in the yellow five. Was Joey Logano to jump to the outside. Watch that yellow line on the inside as well. Mike Bliss in the 44. You cannot it's advance. Going yeah, you can't advance your spot. But you can uh, you can pull down below that line if you're going to give up a spot. Two drivers here with the two and the 18 who had said before the race and in practice yesterday that they were going to work together today as much as possible. As Dale Earnhardt Jr. goes to the point, drafting help from Joe Nemechek. That's two drivers that have a lot of experience and a lot of wins between them, but here comes the 18 and the two of Elliott Sadler. You see them dropping down the hill? It looked like a roller coaster. Well, they had a head of steam and a lot of momentum and needed a place to take it. There well, they, they did. Take the lead. 
you see that how quickly things changed there. Nemechek car probably run a little bit warm. He had to get some air to the front of his car. Now Junior has no help whatsoever going by him on both sides. When you're sitting in that position, that feels like an eternity. Your spotter's probably telling you, help's on its way, but it's like you can't get there fast enough. Seven, Danica Patrick, 99, Kenny Wallace. That's for third place. Like those front two might have separated ever so slightly off turn two and here comes the pack the two drivers there on the inside with danica patrick and ryan truex not a lot of experience there but they've got fast race cars moving to the front Danica jump out there for just a second. I think she probably felt like she had a little bit of a push and a run there. If you don't have a partner, you're going to get yourself in serious trouble right there, though. Front two separated. This will get interesting. And she might get some help from Kenny Wallace. This could push Danica Patrick to the lead. Might get there by herself with those front two separated. Well, now you see Elliot Sadler yeah. up on the bumper of uh, Joy Logano. This is probably going to push them back out front. Outside lane, Austin Dillon, three, Dale Earnhardt Jr., five. Danica's searching for a partner. Nobody to run with there. She's oh, trying to car in trouble. Turned in traffic. Brian Scott in the 11. Kurt, Kurt Busch in the also. one. Morgan Shepard in the 89. 39 car, Josh Richards. Drove up into your left rear there. Had a push from the 40. Shepard's car. No real, you know, bad contact there. It could have been a lot worse. You see, that's well, Jason Bowles. Yeah, Jason's got a lot of damage. Kurt Busch, he avoided a, what looked like it was going to be real hard a hard lick right there after they came off the wall, but I think he got through it without getting too much damage. It's got tire marks all down the right side. Looks like some left front damage. Yeah, that's going to happen room today. Of course, Brian Scott, I believe, is the one, the first one that got sideways through the trioval. Came back across in front of the whole field. Watch the yellow car center of the screen. Bush might have got into the left rear of Brian Scott right there. Mm. That's where yeah, Morgan Shepard hit Kirk Bush. See if we can get a little better view if that's if it did happen here. Yeah, it looks sure like he Kirk just did got. get a little uh, nudge from behind also. Yeah, that's I don't right. think there's any doubt he got into the left rear of Brian Scott, and that's a terrible place to get hit from behind in the corner. You know, if you're just hitting, getting hit straight in the rear bumpers, okay. See, right about the time that Kurt Busch hit Brian Scott, Eric Darnell was right up on the back bumper of Kurt Busch. So did he put just that slightest of bump on Kurt's car at just the most inconvenient time. Yeah, and it's also close right there, and I mean, that's that's the chance that you're taking running through there, especially being in the middle. Your car's a little more unstable in that type of situation anyway. Work on the right front fender. Middle of the back here, guys. Work on the right front fender. Hey, you know, we talk about track position, and if you spend longer on pit road, you know, it's not as big a deal here. Well, that's the one area where it can bite you. Kurt Busch had the penalty. Back of the pack again. Caught up in the right. 
Well, you can look at it both ways, too. I mean, he wouldn't have been in this wreck, obviously, if he'd been out front in front of it. But we had the 22 car, Brad Keselowski, his teammate, also the Cornish. They're running at the back to try to avoid these kind of wrecks. But they were far enough Anthony, back. Anthony, keep working on it a little bit there, buddy. Uh, if you're going to choose that, right, then you need to be back far enough to where you have time to avoid that. Kevin Harvick is back there. We see Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is back there. So there were four cars. And as long as they keep that back there, they can get pretty far back from that and make sure they can avoid these types of situations. Curtin, on the other hand, was trying to get back to the front. Yes. He wasn't in that strategy of running at the back, so he kind of found himself in the hornet's nest. Good road is open here. We'll see what we get for takers among the front runners. A lot, but not all. That's still, that's a good opportunity to go ahead and top off with fuel. Dave? Kyle Busch, a taker, fuel only. It'll put them in one of their fuel windows, which would be a very lengthy one more stop strategy. Mike? Michael Annette in the same boat, Dave. Fuel only on the 43 car. Pretty happy with their race car right now, Doc. And ditto for rookie Austin Dillon. Fuel only, Sunoco fuel going in. Whoa, and Dillon can't get out. He's blocked by the car in front of him. John West Townley. They got to back him up. It will cost him a lot of time here it's under yellow. To fix it. Question is, how much damage on the front of that three car, if any, we can follow up on that in a minute. He hit Tally pretty good. So second caution is out at Talladega today. Before damage. Trouble in the tri-oval, which led to some trouble on the pit lane. that looks like for Austin Dillon when we come back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Talladega, Alabama and the Talladega Super Speedway where the fans come to see thrill a minute racing that you won't find any place else. It was a little too thrilling for Brian Scott a moment ago. Turned out of traffic, collecting five other cars, bringing out the second caution of today's NASCAR Nationwide Series race. While we're under the yellow, take a minute to remind you that the NBA playoffs continue tomorrow with a doubleheader here on ABC. First at 12.30 Eastern, Kia NBA Countdown. Then at 1 Eastern, Luol Deng and the Bulls visit Andre Iguodala and the 76ers in game four of their series. And then at 3.30 Eastern, LeBron, Dwayne Wade and the Heat host Carmelo Anthony and the Knicks in game four. The NBA playoffs on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. Here at Talladega, we are cleaning up from that uh, multi-car crash that put us under the caution flag. We saw repairs being made on pit lane to some of the cars involved. We have seen a second pit stop here for Kevin Harvick. Doc, what's up? Actually, this is the only stop he's making, Alan. A little uh, strategy by Ernie Cope and Kevin Harvick by waiting to come in right now. They're going to top it off, and also the three cars going to come in. They're going to top both these cars off with fuel, meaning they will have a one-lap buffer to make it to the checkered flag on one more stop. Also checking the front end on the three car, but the four tires here for Kevin Harvick and a bumper check for the three, minimal to no damage at all for Austin Dillon. Guys? All right, and the uh, late pit stop strategy there for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the six as well. Kurt Busch back on track after being involved in the accident a moment ago. You can see Kurt Busch here right in the middle behind Brian Scott. He goes to make a move to the inside, just hooks the left rear corner of the bumper. And that's where the damage for the one came as Morgan Shepard was forced down. Dave? Kurt was on pit road three times to the attention of the crew. Uh, Nick Harrison's a crew chief. Nick, how is the car? I think the car's okay. The biggest concern was the toe end getting knocked out. Everything feels fine there. It was mostly cosmetic damage, but uh, just got, got the gas can hung up on the first stop and kind of got us back in the mess. But uh, seems like we repaired everything, and the uh, Kendrick.com Chevrolet ought to be uh, just fine, work its way back to the front here, and that's what we're hoping for. We've seen cars with some damage do well at these restrictor plate races, guys, so we'll see how Kurt does on this next run as far as speed goes yeah Dave Kyle Bush was involved in an incident last year got his car torn up patched it up brought it back home for the win so it's not over yet for Kurt 
So getting set for the restart here, we're just past a quarter of the distance into the race. The guys up front did not pit under this yellow. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the five, Justin Allgaier in the uh, orange 31, Danica Patrick in the seven. No pit stops for them under this caution. Green, green, green. And here we go. Looks like Justin Allgaier is going to be the odd man out. There's your conversation on the pace laps about Danica and Junior teaming up in the draft a little bit. Yeah, I imagine that's uh, they're going to go as long as they can. She'll have an eye on that temperature gauge here, though. I'm sure they'd like to get a little bit of a lead out here, but you've got the 18 and the 2. Magano and Sadler hooked up again, coming to their outside right now. It's going to be a potent combination to beat at the end of this race. Those two really work good together. You said it as I was thinking it. They have shown some muscle in the in the early going and the ability to work together in the draft. It's about four too wide behind this. Yeah. The Algar finally found him a car that he can get with his teammate Brad Sweet. It was Brad's first time here, but he's doing a nice job so far. We driving that 38 car, black and white machine, outside lane. 30 cars on the lead lap. 26 of them in the lead pack. Pretty good job of counting those you did there. And I carried the one, too. Yeah. <laughs> Algar still running by himself, hadn't found anybody to draft with. Looking ahead, watching that patched up one car from Kurt Busch. Pushing his way up through that center lane of traffic. Second car in the center lane there. Going pretty good. That's up to 11. Just a couple of laps after the restart. back these Penske teammates are they're all the way at the back you see Harvick with Stenhouse they're just trying to stay out of trouble those, those were the four that weren't in the yes uh, yes the 30 on the lead lap and made it kind of easy <laughs> so right from the get-go the Penske posse and uh, Kevin Harvick dropping toward the back we've seen Harvick shoot back up through a couple of times but Hornish and Kozlowski choosing the try and avoid trouble strategy for the beginning part of this race. One thing that'll do too is it'll allow Harvick, we, saw, we heard him say he was inside of a fuel window to make it on one more stop. That strategy will use a lot less fuel. Front 10 there, single file. On that outside lane. Brad Sweet, 38, now with some drafting help from Mike Wallace in the 0-1, and Kirk Busch in the 1 pulls up to join the tail end of the lead group. It's like yeah. Kirk Busch has been able to do that almost by himself. Yeah, he's done a lot of it by himself, he's, but he's very experienced at this, and he's only a few cars behind getting uh, hooked up with his brother, Kyle, who's just about three cars in front. First time oh. we've really seen them single file in that big that big line up front. As Brad Sweet tried to move down to that inside lane after his tandem draft broke up. It looked a little tentative there just for a second. Are you sure I'm clear? Are you sure? <laughs> they were trying to make a switch with he and Mike Wallace, but the switch wasn't going too good. Yeah. If you're going to switch, you have to roll out of the throttle a little bit and allow your partner to, to be able to pass and get in front. Remember earlier we saw Joe Nemechek pushing Dale Earnhardt Jr. up toward the front of the pack. Then all of a sudden Nemechek dropped off Jr.'s back bumper, dropped way back, and spent a long time on pit road under this last caution. It's up with the 87 car. They uh, 
uh, word from pit road has added water to this 87. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't seen more cars have to do that. I really think that's what a lot of this racing right now is about. It's just a little bit of conservation and, and giving yourself an opportunity. Because you can run like this, not have to be tucked right up and get plenty of air to your race car and to that engine to not put yourself in a dangerous situation. Talked about how stressful this driving is for the racing. Does there come a point when you've seen that first wreck, you're in the middle of the pack, you see that car get turned into the wall, where it changes your driving for a little bit? Oh, I think that's probably what, but between that and, and the temperatures of these cars, that probably has calmed us down. We always see a, a point in time, or we used to when we had the pack racing, that things would get strung out. Everybody wanted to relax just for a little bit because you know how frantic things are going to get at the end. Well, it might be calm for a second, but it won't stay that way for long. They'll get restless. Everybody wants to be out front. Joey Logano is the one out front at Talladega. He has come so close. Never finished worse than third in three tries, but he's also not taking home the win yet. Spectacular racing at Talladega. Looking down from our aerial coverage today, brought to you by Direct TV. Only Direct TV gives you dedicated driver channels, so you'll never miss a second of your driver's race. Call 1-800-Direct TV, and you don't want to miss a second of that. That was a good angle for that little move. <laughs> Joey Logano to the point. Mike Bliss in that 44 got pushed to the front by Kevin Harvick. You know, what was so impressive about that was, yeah, Joey Logano can see where he's going. Elliot Sadler has no idea where he may be being led right there and the moves that they might have to make because he can't see those cars that are blocking his vision as he looks through the 18. But, wow, what a great job. I can imagine just holding on the steering wheel. Okay, I don't know where we're going. We're going there quick. <laughs> yeah, we're going fast. Wherever you go, I'm following. Seven cars shuffle back a little bit there, Doc. Yeah, absolutely, Alan. A moment ago, she was running a four spot right behind the five car, and they kept telling her, stay in the tire tracks of Dale Jr., the five car, and hug that yellow line. Stay there, stay there. And then she radioed and said, water temperature 260 and rising. They said, you got to breathe it. She put her nose out and got shuffled, and now she's lost about seven or eight spots. Guys? Welcome to Talladega. Yeah, that's just one of the things you got to really protect because at the end of this thing you got to have a, a car a radiator that's full of water so you can push yeah and you know in just a few years past uh just a few races really with this all of this going on so we see some debris flying i believe that's probably some tape off the one car yep. going up there back there but you used to be able to make a difference in that you could come on a pit stop and take a little bit of a tape off that don't have that option this day and time NASCAR mandates the size of that opening. Oh, look out there. Joey Logano, a little sideways off the bumper of Elliott Sadler. Nice save at 190 miles an hour. That was incredible. Incredible save by Joey Logano. That would have been a huge wreck. You look at this banking in these turns, Dale, and you think that's the hardest part of the racetrack, but that trioval that has half the banking of the corners actually is, is dicier to a driver. Yeah, it really is. The cars get really light at that point in time. You don't have the load that you have once you get down into the corners, so your car, the back end of your car is getting really light there. Any contact can mean disaster. Scary moment for Joey Logano. Mark. Coming back to you here on your bumper. Whoa. You can see that just that little bit of getting hung up on the very right corner of the bumper there. These bumpers don't line up that well because of how rounded they are. And so when you get off the center of that, then it really makes a huge difference. And that they have to run offset so that rear car can stay cool enough. And Elliot's doing a good job of that, but that is the danger. Pit road, Jamie. And you hear the communications between Elliott Sadler and his crew. And he said, well, I was way on his butt. That was my fault. But in the meantime, these two are having a great time running together. You see, they're already locked back up and moving toward the front. Elliott Sadler saying Joey Logano has been, quote, textbook on the restarts. And as far as pushing and doing the tandem, these two are a threat. Alan? 
Uh, very much, I agree. I think these two have kind of shown their hand of what they can do today. The question is, who out there has not shown what they can do? See, the Wallace is paired back up again. Mike and Kenny. 0-1-99, that outside lane. And in Logano getting shuffled off the front bumper of Elliott Sadler, Dale Jr. went to the point in the five with the Bush brothers, second and third. How about the leader, Dave? You guys talked about pushing another car earlier and the dangers of doing that and overheating your car. Well, we saw Junior push early in the race, about 10 laps in a row. Do we think he's learned what he needs? Listen to him under the last caution. Got to ask if you'd like a push on this restart since the 7 will be in your mirror. It's not, ne not really, not, ne not necessarily. I don't really think we need to do any push until the end unless, some, you know, for whatever reason. I don't really know why you'd want to do it otherwise. I don't know what I can do. I'm ready to do it when the time comes to do it. Now, as you heard, he was discussing being pushed, so he's seen both sides of the spectrum. And uh, what do you think that thing is that he was talking about that he knows how to do here, guys? <laughs> he, w that's when? one of the guys that hadn't shown his hand yet. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a few more at the yeah, very back. Yeah. you got Brad Kozlowski and Hornish, and we haven't hardly talked about them at all because they're just hanging back. Yeah, and something I think, I think that Junior's learned about his cars, how much he can push and get them to him and another car out in front of the pack, and then that would allow them to settle it between themselves. Dale Earnhardt Jr., five NASCAR Sprint Cup Series wins, one NASCAR Nationwide Series win at Talladega. He's going for another one today. Oh, wow. Talladega in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, live from Alabama this afternoon. New leaders, 0-1 and 99, Mike and Kenny Wallace. Talked about them just before the start of the race as being underfunded teams with experienced drivers that have a chance to shine today. Here they are side by side for the lead. Big line coming outside. Still coming outside tight right here. Short lived. They did the tandem draft to get up there, but then had to separate, and here comes the train. Yeah, the switch wasn't very smooth between the brothers there. Earnhardt Jr. back to the point. Outside lane headed by James Busher in the 30. The Daytona winner. Second in line behind Busher in that outside lane. Guy making his first NASCAR Nationwide Series start here at Talladega. Josh Richards in the 39. He is a lap down in that car, but right behind him in the 15 car, white and black there, another Earnhardt. That is Jeffrey Earnhardt, Kerry's son, Dale's grandson. Out there digging hard. Quick reminder, Summit Racing Equipment, NHRA Southern Nationals, qualifying tonight at 7 Eastern over on ESPN2. You can see the finals for the NHRA Southern Nationals over on ESPN2 tomorrow at 7 Eastern time. Then next weekend, the NASCAR Nationwide Series. <laughs> Talk about out of the frying pan into the fire from Talladega to Darlington. ESPN2, 6.30 Eastern, Friday night. Be a terrific race. Now, on the last caution, there were three teams that did not pit. Let's get up to speed with Nationwide Insurance. Check on the strategy for those three teams. Dave? Just checked in with Pops Yuri for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He said they will come on lap 65 to pit road to get fuel in that race car. Doc? Danica Patrick can actually go to lap 64 based on fuel calculations. There's Danica, and she has moved back up the track a little bit now in 14th position. Car handling okay, got shuffled out. The temperature has come back down, trying to give it some room. She will need one more stop after this next one to make it to the checkered flag. Mike. Talking with Jimmy Elledge earlier today, he told me that his his instructions to his driver, Justin Allgaier, were to be patient. They have been patient. They didn't pit the last time, or, uh, their last round of pit stops under caution, so expect them to come down pit road in four laps. Lap 60 for the 31. All right, thanks. So we'll watch for the out-of-sequence pit stops if we don't see the caution flag between now and those lap numbers just reported on. 
Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading the Bush Brothers at Talladega, 56 of 117 laps complete. Back after this from our ABC stations. Welcome back to the Aaron's 312 at Talladega. Make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. We have just crossed the midway point of today's race. Had just two caution flags so far. 13 different leaders, 21 different lead changes. And an awful lot going on on the radios between the drivers inside these cars. Their crew chiefs in the pits and the spotters on the spotter stand, David. Well, right now, Alan, as we know, the Bush brothers are working together. Kurt in front. You're on board with Kyle riding behind. Right in front of him, there is some damage to the right side of his fender and some tape that they worked on. And Kyle said this about it. Hey, if you can talk to the one guy's beamer, they got to get their back. The Chevrolet decal is peeled off. And they got to fix the right side. It's too dirty. They got a lot of tape flying, and it's getting in my grill, I think. That obviously can cause more overheating issues. I checked with the one team. Crew Chief Nick Harrison said, uh, well, we'll try to get to it if we have time on a pit stop. Not a priority right now, though. Jerry Punch? Take a look at the cars third and fourth in this lead draft. That's the three car and the 33 car. Now, Kevin Harvick, the veteran, the 33, trying to help teach the rookie, Austin Dillon, about Talladega drafting. In fact, Kevin using his radio to his spotter, who's relaying it to Austin Dillon. Listen in. is Talladega drafting 101. Kevin Harvick teaching the pupil Austin Dillon trying to help the young man get his first nationwide win. Guys? Fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good stuff and coming from a guy that knows how to get it done. Talked about some people needing green flag pit stops as we have trouble just past the start finish line. Brad Sweet, 38, hard into the wall. Hold her down there. You're below the yellow. Nothing's coming at you down in there. Another car involved. Looked like it might have been Eric McClure. It was down on the inside of the track, Andy. Sorry about that, duty. I saw him pick you up. What perfect timing on this 31 pitting right there, too. For this, it looked like the 31 car had a flat right front tire coming down pit road. That's what I thought too. Oh, don't panic on me. You I know they were due. Just be easy. Help him out there, Stevie. Dead four. Should be fine. Algar probably slid that right front to get to pit road speed, getting to the entrance. Damage there for John West Townley. What happened? It's Mike Wallace in the 0-1. Yeah, it looked like Mike got in the back of Brad Sweet. Yeah, Brad might have been moving around a little bit there. Kind of like just what came Harvick said. There. Yeah, yeah, you got to drive these things straight. You, you make a lot of erratic moves hard to keep up and you're just going to you basically spin yourself out you might blame it on the guy behind you and surprisingly coming back across the track didn't collect more yeah Stenhouse was right in the middle of that too see Townley got into the back of Eric McClure is that Timmy Hill that got a piece of that as well? So. Kenny Wallace going to get a good look. Wrecking behind you. Still green. Or Still not. green, yellow's out. Wave it off here. Wave it, it off. for a second. It just passed third. Did a good job to miss that, though. This pit stop uh, is coming up now. They will not be inside of a window to make it to the end. So it's like everybody will have to make one more stop. By the way, Brad Sweet did climb from that car and walk to that ambulance you saw drive away for that mandatory checkup in the infield medical center. For those like Dale Jr. who didn't pit, and the guys who had stopped, like Kyle Busch, it was only going to be a few laps difference anyway before we saw the whole field come in. So now, 
They'll all do it under caution. And we'll see what kind of strategy is played here. Kevin Harvick choosing to stay out. Dave, what are they going to do on the five? They're going to change four tires, Alan. They're going to fill it full, full, full of Sunoco fuel to hopefully get him to the next window. Now in your triple pits, Kurt Busch will come on to pit road, giving up uh, that top five running position. So far, the crew fueling the car, taking on right side tires. They are going to pull some of that debris off the right rear. Doc? That middle rookie, Austin Dillon, four tires. will get a full of Sunoco fuel and a warning to be careful leaving the pit with the car in front of you. Jamie. Elliot Sadler and his running mate Joey Logano both in four tires is the call. Joey Logano in the 18 wants to tighten up. They'll go down on the track bar. Watch the two. He'll go on the jack as soon as the jack drops. Down and away. Alan. All right. So a little shuffle in the running order as a result of some various choices made on the pit lane. Under caution just past halfway at Talladega. Cleaning up under caution at Talladega, Sunday, May 20th. It's the season's biggest music event, featuring music's biggest stars with a special tribute to Whitney Houston. Hosted by Modern Families, Ty Burrell and Julie Bowen, live from the Vegas Strip, the Billboard Music Awards, Sunday, May 20th on ABC. Got 52 laps to go, and as we get set to go back racing in one more lap, seeing a variety of people going to top off that fuel tank. Kislowski, Sam Hornish, Kevin Harvick, Kenny Wallace. That's Ryan Truex, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. A little bit from the restart. Danica Patrick, our in-race reporter today, is in 10th position. Danica Dale Chair, do you have a copy? Copy. Well, you've uh, a little over halfway here. Anything, any surprises for you there today, or your car, you're satisfied with it? Everything's good. It's just a matter of time here. They get, we get such big runs with this spoiler, so you can either choose to hang low or you can get, you know, take runs and use them, but you're running a little more risk that way. So I've done a little bit of both. You pretty much know what you need to do at the end of this race right now? Oh, I don't know if that's the case, but I'm going to start trying to hone in on it here. <laughs> okay, good luck. Thanks. couple of other small details to clean up before the restart. Uh, Josh Richards got the free pass on the caution. He comes back onto the lead lap in the 39 car, left of the screen and right of the screen. Justin Allgaier, remember we saw him coming to pit lane under green, and then we had to look away because there was the crash ahead of him on the racetrack. Well, he's getting a penalty for speeding entering pit road. Watch his pit entry here. Yeah, there's a reason the right front tire was flat. He locked him up and way too much speed coming in. Yeah, the road. reason we didn't see that is start finish line is on the other end of pit road, and that's where our announce booth is, right above the start finish. And and that little crash that distracted. Yeah, yeah, we were distracted <laughs> a little bit too. So gonna go green with 50 laps to go. We're gonna have 28 cars on the lead lap. And at the head of the line, a couple of the youngsters and the future of this sport. Austin Dillon in the three, Cole Witt in the 88. Green flag. Junior, Cole Witt's boss and team owner. Right behind him in the draft. Will he push him to the point? Oh, I believe he's going to. Busher had got up onto the back bumper of the three of Austin Dillon and was keeping him out front there, but Junior's attached to that 88. I believe they'll be leading by the time they get to the start finish line way down here. Danica talked about going to try and find out what she needed to do as Cole Witt goes to the point. Elliot Sadler teaming up with Patrick in the draft in that outside lane. Let's see if they make a move. 
Yeah, and she seemed confident in knowing what her car could do, but still learning process to knowing what you're going to be able to do and how you're going to do it at the end of this race. And the whole dynamic of this draft is going to change when it gets to about four or five laps to go. Sadler, the championship leader, Jamie. Well, under that caution, Alan, they called an audible to bring him back down pit road to top him off. But the reason he had this stuck in the grill, it's a heim off of someone's sway bar. They could have avoided disaster. They topped him off and out he went. Maybe one of those cars in the crash shedding parts. And while you watch the racing left screen, right screen, a look at finding unexpected parts and pieces in places on your car where they don't belong. Yeah, they dig, dig it out of there and put a little patch on it. Right now, Danica's glad he made that extra pit stop. Yep. Allowed them to get teamed up together. They're up to third right now. Sadler's going to have to get a little air to the front we'll of that right two-car. He's off. He's off of you. Cole he must got hot. Cole Whitney, the 88, leading Dale Jr. in the five, second, Danica Patrick in the seven, third, first, second, and third for Junior Motorsports. I think they've done their homework here this week. I heard Pop say that they really worked on the grill and cooling system to make that car where it could push, and he's been able to do that today very effectively and for a long time. I think he's going to be a real factor when it comes down to a couple to go. And then the snarling pack behind it. Mike and Kenny Wallace, 99 and 01, teamed up once again, making their way back towards the front. Comes Harvick. I think he's been testing a lot to see how long it takes him to get back to the front. He chose to stay out, lead a lap. Might have been to get a, a point for owner's points there, but uh, I think he just likes to see what it's going to take and give himself a little bit of a challenge there, too. Watching the Wallace brothers there, of course, Kenny Wallace. This 99 car driven by Travis Pastrana last weekend. He's going to the point. Kenny says he's not racing for the championship anymore. Doesn't have sponsorship to run every week. He knows what he wants to do. And there's one run just ran hot. Looks like Mike Wallace is feeling a lot of water right there. Here's what Kenny had to say about his goal for the day. You know, I feel like I'm going to win this race because I'm coming down here wide open. Uh, I'm not coming down here. I'm not in the driver's points. You know, car points are very important, but we're locked in that. Uh, I've talked to crew chief Scott Zipidelli. He wants to win. He looks like he has a shot at winning. Oh, yeah. I talked to him yesterday for quite a while. He is he's really confident that he can win here. And he wants to so bad just because he wants to be he wants to be in the series full time. They have to get sponsorship for him to be able to do it. He feels like winning would be a good step in that direction to get a sponsor. Three wide up front. Patrick to the outside of Earnhardt. Wallace down low. Yeah, I think Danica might have thought that Elliot Sadler was going to push her around Dale Jr., but Elliot hung her out there, and now she's falling back, and he's attached to Jr.'s bumper. It's Ricky Stenhouse Jr. coming up behind Patrick in that six car. And you look in this pack, broader picture, while the experience or the familiar names are racing up front for the lead, look at the guys in the middle of the pack that's getting dicey there, but you got Jeremy Clements in that silver 51 car, Taylor Malsom in the 19, Josh Richards in the 39, all in the mix into these final laps as Elliott Sadler goes to the lead. Where's this intensity builds? You can see how that stack up can occur as everybody's yeah. trying to go and, and a lot less give and take, and that thing starts stacking up. Once it gets about four or five cars deep, it's almost impossible to avoid it. Yeah, and Kyle Busch did a fantastic job. It looked like that everything happened right in front of him there, and he was able to get out of the throttle. His brother Kurt right behind him, so they worked well together to avoid disaster. 200 mile mark at Talladega. Still anybody's race and a lot of unpredictable action to come. Live at Talladega, 
Perhaps a little overheating from Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s car. Not perhaps. See the water shoot out the overflow as he tries the push draft with Danica Patrick. And we come down to the 40 lap to go mark. 28 cars on the lead lap. That's not an alarming amount of water coming out of that overflow, but that over time can, uh, can kind of compromise that cooling system. Yeah, he's been on our bumper for quite a while now. They came from probably back around the 18th spot. Ooh, look out. Don't get too off center. New leader, Danica Patrick. Straight, nice and straight. Here comes Five Dale Earnhardt Jr. Five's right outside the six, outside the six here. be a little experiment on Junior's part. Yeah, and the one thing that he did is he got the, the six off of the seven's bumper by getting over on his quarter panel. That's an old trick, that side draft, because it can slow it's the car right down. File, it can really slow that car down if you pull down on that right rear corner of the car. Nemechek pushes Earnhardt Jr. to the point. So put me behind the wheel. You've, you've had great success at this style of racing. You're watching all this unfold. You're feeling the race around you. You think you have an understanding of your car's capabilities. How do you figure out where to be and, and make a plan when everybody else <laughs> around you has their own plan? That, that's the problem <laughs> is getting on yeah, the same page with somebody else that's there. And it's just a matter of getting yourself positioned. And uh, I think Dale Jr. is very comfortable with knowing what he's capable of with his race car. When it comes time to go, he knows he's going to get some help. One of your, your one of your sayings that stuck with me about racing in this style of racing, you want to be moving forward at the finish. Yeah, when you get inside that last 10 laps, especially, and you can even get it down further than that. But you, you unless your car is just exceptionally strong, you've got somebody that's going to stay attached to your bumper here, which is probably not going to happen for very long. You want to be going forward, and that's whenever you can make things happen. It's hard to block them coming at such a high rate of speed if they get hooked up. As we see, the 33, and I believe that's the three on his bumper. No, it's 54. 54, so I'm sorry. All right, talking about making plans and trying to figure out how it's all going to unfold with just uh, the potential for one more pit stop remaining in this race. Information among potential drafting partners being passed around. We've seen Joey Logano and Elliot Sadler drafting together a lot. That sign says fuel only on last stop no matter what that way that they know what each other they're going to do and they're not going to get up you know separated by making a pit stop or one's changing tires and one's not kurt bush on the pit lane dave to keep these guys from doing the two-car tandem nascar puts a pressure relief valve on the radiators so if it gets hot it pops that valve at 25 pounds per square inch kurt's last couple of laps 39 pounds per square inch the good thing was it was still reading which meant there was water there but it was way overheated they're trying to put some cool water in it and try to get it to cool back down even when he ran by himself kurt could not get the temps to come down in the one car now, the fact that it was 39 pounds means it was trying to blow off more pressure than the, the valve would flow. That tells you it was really hot, pushing a lot of water, a lot of steam. Yeah, he'd gotten past that point of no return. Kevin Harvick to the point, 33, pushed by Kyle Busch. Well, Kyle needs a new partner. That's a good one. That's an unlikely pairing, though, I have to say. Uh -oh. Trouble off turn two. Got a car in trouble. Hey, you're clear right there. You're clear. Tire and everything. Car just came off. We cut a tire in two. Didn't hit anything. Here, don't worry about it. Just limp her back. Tires will rip the fenders off. Josh Richards, third caution of the race. I uh, checked that fourth caution of the race with 36 laps to go. Probably some contact side to side. They were all close back there back in the pack and that probably cut the sidewall out of the tire. See right there's where the tire goes. And a couple of guys that have been hanging back playing that hangout back strategy all race long. Whoops. Look at that. Almost didn't work out. 
John West Townley in the 24 into the back of Brad Keselowski in the 22. Well, somebody you have sometimes you have somebody joining your party that <laughs> hadn't been well, there all day. There's just nowhere to hide out here, even at the back. See, I think you're in a pretty safe spot. No real action going on. All of a sudden, a guy blows a tire right in front of you. Richards had gotten a lap down, got the free pass last caution, and gotten back on the lead lap. He was running 19th at the time of that trouble. So tough luck there for... Well, it puts everyone man. now in the fuel window, so we don't have to worry about that. Is the plan changing down on the pit lane that we showed you just a minute ago? Uh-oh, looks like it. They said fuel only no matter what, but what about this? Okay, looks like they are going to do just gas. Six seconds only, it says. They've calculated how much fuel they need and how long it'll take. Remember earlier we talked about don't give up and, and uh, Kyle Busch coming back from a spin last year to win the race? Well, just keep this in mind with his brother, Kurt. John West Townley was the only car lap down besides Kurt. He's going to get the free pass on this caution. That'll put Kurt, the only car, one lap down. Another yellow brings him back onto the lead lap for the finish. Well, I had kind of counted him out when I saw him on pit road under green putting <laughs> water in, but hey, maybe not. Never know. Stops with 34 laps to go. Money time for the pit crews, Dave. Fuel only for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Just precious gallons of Sunoco fuel to take him till the end. He'll keep the tires he's got. Good to go. Mike. Joe Nemechek running inside the top five, not willing to give up much track position. No tires, just fuel on the 87 car. Doc. Fuel only. Brian Smith, the, guy, the fuel man. Got to get one whole can in. Got it in and Harvick is away. Jamie. Well, the plan for the two and the 18 was fuel only, but you see the crew working on the left-hand side of Elliott Sadler. He said, guys, I ran over debris again. We need to take tires a little bit longer than anticipated. All right, so he and Legato getting back together for this last run of the race might be a little interesting. Back for the restart after this message and a word from our ABC stations. ESPN's coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series on ABC. Brought to you by John Deere. Hurry into your dealer for additional green tag savings during our biggest deer season event ever. A Talladega version of synchronized swimming. <laughs> I'm not sure that's uh, the way that's supposed to work with that snorkel. Yeah, I don't think when you take the snorkel underwater, it works quite as well. <laughs> Down to the final 33 laps at the world's fastest speedway on a scorching hot afternoon. We've had already 34 lead changes today and still got plenty more to come. Sam Hornis Jr. in the 12 is the race leader as we work behind the safety car and clean up from this most recent yellow flag. He has not yet pitted under the yellow. Expect to see him on the pit lane momentarily, which will put Kevin Harvick up to the point unless he goes the pit right, lane too. Pit here. Pit here. We let a lap. Sam fourth in the championship coming in, so staying out to make sure they let a lap, collect a bonus point toward the title. going on remember we saw the 41 car get uh, damaged in an accident a little while ago the car is still in the race there's been a driver change though doc yeah that's timmy hill you're looking at out there alan uh, last year's rookie of the year i just talked to him when he climbed out of the car he said he'd been sick for the last day or so with an intestinal flu throwing up last night couldn't keep anything down got nauseated got lightheaded couldn't get enough fluids in him in the car and uh, lightheaded here at 195 miles an hour is not where you want to be so they put blake cook in the car and timmy here trying to get some oxygen and some fluids alan Blake Cook was here uh, for the weekend, one of the regulars in the Nationwide Series, unable to be in the race when qualifying was rained out the other day. So he'll get to finish the last quarter of the race or so behind the wheel of that 41 car. Cleanup continues. We'll get back to racing in a moment. How's this one going to play out? Going to be another last lap pass for the win like we've seen the last three straight years? Think so. Back live, Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama with the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Getting down to it. 
getting down to the deciding laps of this one though at this giant two and two thirds mile racetrack 31 laps is a lot of racing yeah it seems like we've made their last pit stop it seems like well, okay we got to get get with it here but you really have to be patient from here now to the end i think about four or five laps to go is when the intensity <laughs> level needs to come up but we'll see it now yeah we're going to definitely see it there's going to be a lot more taking here than what there is giving uh and it, it just it, it's natural for the driver to think that's not that far to go and a lot of these cars drivers that don't have a lot of experience here think they need to make all of this happen now and i look for some things to start happening a little while ago jeremy clements was up in the middle of that lead group racing for a top 10 spot had to make a green flag pit stop due to some damage to the grill got him a couple of laps down he's just taken a wave around now he and kurt bush the only cars one lap down are essentially racing for the free pass if we get another caution to get back on the lead lap. So, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch in the front row for the restart. Danica Patrick, Kenny Wallace inside row number two. We're still holding you back. We haven't cut you loose yet. Yeah, you definitely exercise a lot of restraint out here, but sometimes being over anxious gets you to the back, too. Yeah, but you've learned all that. You understand that that's all about. Now, she understands that business is going to pick up. The intensity grows as the laps wind down. 26 cars on the lead lap as the green flag waves again. going to see a move toward the front for the first time all day by Hornish in the 12 and Keslowski in the 22. Three wide for the lead. Around lap traffic make it four wide. That's a perfect example of what a typical finish has been like in recent years at Talladega. That one would have been Joey Logano by uh, two hundredths of a second. By a little bit. Logano 18, Sadler 2, found their way back together in the draft again quickly. Kyle Busch 54 with Kenny Wallace 99 on the outside. Yeah, we've talked about Kenny Wallace a lot today being up front. Definitely going to be a factor when it comes time. He knows how to get the job done here. First time we've seen that 22 and 12 race today with Keselowski and Hornish. Yeah, and I'm actually a little surprised that they're making a move this early. I don't think they could get as far back as they were, but maybe it's time for them to go and see what they've got, Jamie. Well, that's exactly what's happening. Chad Walter, the crew chief for the 12 car, Sam Hornish Jr., he just told his driver before they went green, he said, we anticipate there's going to be more cautions. We need to make our move. Let's go. Let's hook up with the 22. Go to the front. Well, Jamie, since you mentioned it. Well, the best I, chance for the, one of these big wrecks is now. I was going to say, I don't necessarily know that I necessarily understand the strategy if you've laid back all day and you know there's going to be more cautions, but, you know. Everybody has their way of going about this. The closer to the finish and the more take and the less give, the more likely the big multi-car wreck. That's a part of racing here, too. We'll hope not. No, we'll hope not, but it, you know, the likelihood of that happening is going to increase as, as we get down here. They just can't team up in the, the pairs as much because of the temperatures and it's running hot. So you're going to make the pack racing more prevalent. That's going to mean more closer competition through these corners and especially through the trial. The last nine straight nationwide series races at Talladega. The last green flag run has been three laps or less. We get the late yellow here. Rod Vidal Jr. Another Earnhardt on the move is Jeffrey Earnhardt. He's done a good job of staying up front all day. He's staying kind of out of trouble. He's right there in the middle of it. Right on Kenny Wallace's rear bumper. 
Showing in 10th place. And be careful here, though. Got to be careful you don't shove your partner into trouble. You almost did right there. Here comes Keselowski on the outside. And Joey Logano and Elliott Sadler looking ahead here at Sadler being overtaken when they drafted together went to the point looked like Sadler had to come off Logano's back bumper to get some air to the nose of that two car and now they're back in the soup in fact Mike Wallace gonna be the beneficiary of Keselowski's time to move Keselowski's giving Mike a good push jumped up there and picked up a ride Logano, Kenny Wallace to the outside. And the problem you're going to have in this situation is if you start trying to make a switch because everybody's right there, you're, you're not able to make that switch. Somebody fills that spot. This look spectacular to watch this pack of cars thundering around Talladega from our aerial coverage brought to you by Direct TV. Only Direct TV gives you dedicated driver channels so you'll never miss a second of your driver's race. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Waving the hand out the window, championship leader Elliot Sadler. He's got a lot at stake. He's, he really wants to try to win this championship. Needs a good finish, but he also wants to win. He's got to keep the water in that radiator, so he's just going to back out here for a little bit. Yes, he can't be in there at all, in that mix at all right now, and may even be too too late right now, Jamie. That's right. He has everybody up on the roof looking at his grill right now through binoculars. He's saying, I don't know if I have trash or what, but it's still not cooling down. They're telling him it looks good right now, and Elliot's saying, I can't do anything. Well, what happens is, is during the race, they blow that valve enough to lose a measured amount of water, and what happens is at some point, then it won't cool down because there's not enough water in the system. Remember, we're talking about the pressure relief valve mandated on the cooling systems by NASCAR, part of the rules package implemented for this season to try and break up the tandem drafting and get back more to the pack racing that the fans say they love so much more. Kyle Busch, the defending winner of this race, out in front, this time not behind the wheel of a Joe Gibbs racing Toyota, but a Kyle Busch Motorsports Toyota, Dave. And, Alan, we followed the story of this team all season long. Started late last year. They came to Daytona with their tongues hanging out, barely getting their car there. The worst thing they could do was go with a wrecked race car. They couldn't race here at Talladega. And we know what happened. On the final lap going for the win, Kyle wrecked that car. Talked to general manager Rick Wren this morning. This brand-new car would not have even been attempted if they had saved that other car. I said, okay, well, how much better is it than the Daytona car? Much better, he said, in so many ways. They've learned so much, the fact that they wrecked that car brought them to where this beautiful race car may be able to win today. Haven't seen a repeat winner in a restrictor plate race. That's Daytona or Talladega the last 13 times in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Kyle Busch trying to break that trend. It looks good now, but he's got a lot of hungry drivers. Won't they? Make that doesn't make sure that doesn't happen again. That whole inside line right now, they're very content to sit there and ride and get some laps gone here. But there's if you're any further back than that, you're starting to lose a little bit of patience. You want to make some things happen. Well, the problem is, is that inside lane and the way they're lined up, they're running pretty fast lap times about 51 40s which is is going to be tough you're going to have to really line up good in tandem to be able to pass that group dale when when fans look at that picture of a driver behind the wheel at talladega there's kyle bush he's out there and it doesn't look 
like much. But at 190 miles an hour on these four-story tall banks, it's a lot more physical than it appears to be. Well, first off, it's very, very hot inside the car. Yeah, and, and, and right there where Kyle Busch is, we watch him pretty relaxed. And, and out front right now, he is pretty relaxed. It sits you down in the seat pretty hard, though, because of the banking there. So you're not really seeing that. But Kyle Busch looks very relaxed and, and ready to take this on. We can see this later and get a shot of his eyes. We'd probably see something a lot different. See a lot more white there? Yes. <laughs> 20 laps to go. Top 11, single file. First double wide back for 12th and 13th. Teams starting to figure out how they want these last laps to play out, besides holding the trophy, Doc. Exactly. Tony Uri Jr. calling the shots for Danica Patrick. Danica's first time at Talladega. A lot of coaching, Tony. You're telling her, hug the yellow line, drag the brake, stay in line. Has she learned enough to be able to make a move in the final 20 laps and win this thing? Well, I think she's been enough restrictor plate races that she knows what's going to happen here at the end. And uh, Rick Crelly's been spotting for her today, and he's doing an amazing job. And, uh, you know, we've tried to do what we can for her in here. But, uh, you know, it's just a, everything's about working back at Junior Motorsports building these great cars. I mean, we got a chance to get all three of them here in the top five, and that's what we're looking forward to doing here at the end. Tony Erie Jr., he was the tire changer when Dale Earnhardt Sr. won here in 93, and he was the car chief for Dale Jr., who won five consecutive races in the Sprint Cup in the early 2000s, hoping to get Danica Patrick to victory lane today, guys. Doc, thanks. Seven car in seventh spot. Quick point of business, that was Jeremy Clements. You saw the lead pack overtake, putting him a second lap down. That does leave Kurt Busch as the only car one lap down. He needs a caution to get back into this thing. Yeah, he'll need a caution not to go another lap down. He's not in any kind of draft, but at this time, he's running about 55 second laps, about three and a half, four seconds off. Beginning to see the Penske Dodges move forward. 22 and 12, yellow 12 Hornish. White and black 22 Kislowski. Remember last week at Richmond? The story about some of the Chevrolet teams having to cut the front bumper cover off their machines. The two Penske Dodges had to cut the front bumper cover off their machines in technical inspection here. The fines and probations that were put on the crew chiefs like Elliott Sadler's after the Richmond incident can probably be expected to be handed out to the Penske team come Tuesday of this week. You can see the 12 and the 22 hooked back together again. I'm not sure what to make of them. If we should expect to see them make a big run up through the pack in the late laps or if they're finding out that maybe they're not as well positioned as they need to be. Uh, the fact once this inside line starts shifting a little bit, then things are going to be that's going to open things up on the outside, so they're gonna be able to make some more time. It's just so hard right now because they have to stay attached and they don't wanna run hot at this point. Hornish and Keselowski in 15th and 16th. It's Kyle Busch, head of the pack, Dave. And Alan, with his brother Kurt only possibly getting back on the lead lap and becoming some help at the end, who would his new drafting partner be? We talked about how the brothers wanted to work together, but Kurt's not there. Well, Mike Beam, Kyle's crew chief, told me this morning that the second best option is that car third in line, Joe Nemechek. Nemechek a run a Toyota as well. The guys who hang the bodies on Kyle's car are the same guys who do it for Joe Nemechek. So they know they're very fast, streamline-wise. They have a good motor, and as we've said before, Joe knows how to win at restrictor plate races. Right, Mike? That's absolutely correct. He's won here twice, Dave, and just because he's won here twice doesn't mean it wouldn't be an upset for him to go to victory lane today and to get a better idea. All you need to do is compare his pit stall to the other pit stalls here in the garage. If you look at some of the higher dollar pit stalls, you'll see they've got the Taj Mahal crew carts, six sets of tires. As you pan over to Joe Nemechek's stall, however, a very small old school pit box. They only brought three sets of tires today. They've got a fraction of the number of crew members on this team. A victory today would be huge for Nemco 
Capital Motorsports. Joe told me coming into this race, he feels like they've got a fair chance. They've got the car they ran in Daytona with, the car, the only car they've led laps with all season long. It was wrecked in Daytona, but it has been repaired. A little bit of a wobble for the 87. However, he gets up over the yellow line and back in line, Alan. Beautiful save off the nose of the three car. Joe Nemechek hangs on to it outside lane well here's what to make of the Penske guys well that's what happened right there is all of these guys separated that inside line slowed down a lot these two hooked up right now but he has been there for a while now he gets the air to it yeah watch that the, the front of the windshield right lower corner that 22 car has been streaming water for the last couple of laps well Hornet should have got to the inside right there and let the 22 uh -oh. worry about his own deal well that was a move Kyle Busch through the middle here we go now. Yeah. Good to come back Four down again. wide behind him. Still 15 laps to go. That's a lot of laps. A lot of racing left. Really getting your attention as a driver, though. You know in your mind that things are winding down. Start. It's time to start getting yourself positioned as to where you need to be, where you want to be, and maybe with a partner. that move Kyle made to take that lead back not afraid to take a small space and put that race car in it look at this I'm really not sure why Sam Hornis didn't get back down in front I mean the 22 I know needed air but I would have let him worry about that you needed to get back in line you think that was a planned swap gone wrong in a miscommunication somewhere that could have been well if you planned a swap that wouldn't be how you would do it <laughs> Definitely went wrong, didn't it? Yeah. Never been behind the wheel in a pack like this toward the end of the race, but I know up here in the broadcast booth, I'm kind of bobbing around from foot to foot, <laughs> and you just feel the tension building. Well, trust me, inside the race car, you are too. The tension's there. You're gripping the steering wheel a little bit harder. You're doing things a little bit more differently because you know that time is getting there. I'm listening to 33 right here. I got him on my scanner. They're well aware of what we got. Now, there's a lot of things going to happen before the end, so it might be different people that they're talking about uh, whenever it gets time to do that. I think one that goes a little bit, might be a little bit late. You might need to be trying to move forward, depending. Obviously, if you're sitting in third, then, yeah, that's the time to do it. Twenty six cars on the lead lap. Thirty six lead changes today. Four caution flags. All of them for smaller incidents so far. The last three straight years and four of the last five. A last lap change for the lead in Talladega. And the way this one has unfolded so far today with rule changes NASCAR made to bring back the pack racing and break up the tandem racing and 86 degree temperatures outside right now. Really hard to exactly predict how it's all going to play out. Yeah, and you can see Brad Keselowski there in the 22 really trying to get some air to that the front of that Dodge. Uh, he really heated it up, I believe, and he's even going below the yellow line. He's not advancing, so he can do that, but he's really trying to get the thing cooled down. Will teammates try and get together on the track and work together? Well, the children's cars, Kevin Harvick, 33, with Austin Dillon in three in front of him, Doc. Exactly, Alan. 33, Harvick is the veteran. Dillon is the rookie. And now the owner, Richard Childress, which is Dillon's grandfather, has commandeered the radio and said, OK, Austin, here's the deal. The 33 will make the call. When Harvick says go, you guys are going to go. Harvick is in charge. The 33 will tell you when to go, and you guys will go out, pull out, and try to win this thing. So the granddad, Richard Childress, through Harvick, through Dillon, that's a sequence of communication to try to win at Talladega. The man has spoken. I know Harvick has a long-term contract already there, but if he can help <laughs> Austin <laughs> Dillon win this, I think he might rewrite that thing. By the way, that was Kurt Busch. The leaders just overtook, putting him a second lap down. Ten laps to go. That would be the end of his chances for the day pretty well. Unless something extraordinary happens. 
We've seen Stenhouse be able to really push today and, and do it for a longer period of time. These Ford engines are capable, it seems like, of maybe staying cooler in that situation, and Stenhouse doing a nice job of getting air to the front end, but yet being able to make some speed for himself and his partner. See Elliott Sadler, he's way back, 23rd. Lost the draft, lost the pack. Overheated and tried to get it cooled back down, and I'm sure he, he wanted to get clean air on the nose, but I don't know if he wants this much clean air. Yeah, he had made a run up through, but I believe maybe he has some engine problems now. You know what else I noticed when we saw that shot from head on from the car? The left front corner of that front bumper, that splitter, looks like it's bent up. Like maybe he got down on the apron avoiding one of those wrecks or something, and it might have twisted that a little bit. Very that, possible. Well, I'm that, watching the lap times, though, and his lap times are not bad. There are a couple of tenths off the leader that uh, the lap times are running now with Kyle Busch. Mike Bliss in trouble. Caution flag is out. He just made a switch with Elliott Sadler to go in front of Sadler. If he might have had a tire to go down right there. Could have been a switch gone wrong. He couldn't afford to waste a lot of time on that switch because they were so far behind. He may have tried to rush it. And boy, that caution came about three minutes too late for Kurt Busch. That's only he'll get the free pass, but it'll be to get back only one of the two he's down now. Yeah. We don't see all the leaders pitting here, do we? Oh, I doubt it. Can't yeah. imagine. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah, he's got a lot of damage in the front of that car. That might have just happened. Yeah, seeing that, was it, was yeah. it bent that bad? Yeah, that, saw it yeah see that, that right there. That was what I was talking about earlier when we saw him from that distant shot. He's hit something hard. Yeah, that didn't come from that. Sadler sustained this damage earlier. Yeah. He had made his way back up to the main pack, and obviously as we were watching another battle, he got into a mess and has severely damaged his car. see that front bumper of Sadler's hooked something on the rear bumper, probably from that damage. Those bumpers not smooth, so when they when they uh, rubbed right across, it looked like it hooked, hooked Mike Bliss around. TV, look at it. They're showing it on TV. Yeah, temporary. We're watching it. We see it. It's a man paying attention. Was, who, he, was that was that Elliot's Yeah, how did he know that? Yeah. He's watching one of the big screens <laughs> while he's driving <laughs> on the yeah. caution. <laughs> Hope my telestrating was okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least Elliot now can close back up to the pack. I don't know if he's got a car that'll be able to charge up through the pack. No, but I would think they'd come in and try to fix some of that damage as much as they possibly can, but that's a lot of damage to the front end. They can top it off with water. There's one way to get clean air in the grill. When it stops, just take that weed eater or a, a leaf blower. If they can get it started. Yep. Sadler, two points only ahead of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. coming into this race. Remember Daytona, Sadler and Stenhouse were in that group of 10 cars charging to the checkered flag that were involved in the incident off turn four. Stenhouse got in the wreck and never made it back to the checkered flag. Sadler got through it. He started the season with a 17-point advantage on Stenhouse because he got through the wreck and Stenhouse didn't. Stenhouse has worked meticulously over the last month to chip away at Sadler's lead and get back to basically even. So neither one of them can afford to get swept up in the big wreck or spot somebody a pile of points in this one today, although it certainly is a possibility the way these races unfold. The leader stayed out. Here comes Allgaier. A few more making pit stops. Allgaier was 16th. He was the first guy there. Andy? You see now Sadler coming in for, for some service. Kurt Busch is now going to be one lap down. Here comes Elliott Sadler, Jamie. 
And Andy Elliott Sadler has been talking all race how he got into debris two times. So after he hooked that 44, and that was the word he used as well, he said something is wrong with the front end. It's not allowing me to cool down at all, and I just hooked that car. So you guys do what you can right now to get me out and get me to finish this race. Alan, as you talked about, he has led every race this year. Yeah, Jamie, and um, like I said, spotted that damage and, and not sure exactly what bent that splitter up like that and caved that nose in. 10 seconds, guys. What's the 10? This one to go, Brett? Yeah, we need to go. Need to go, need to go, need to go. Let's go, let's go, guys. All right, so Sadler rejoins the hunt. And that close championship for the NASCAR Nationwide Series moves on from Talladega to famed old Darlington Raceway next Friday night. Great short track in Iowa, Charlotte Motor Speedway, the Monster Mile in Dover. Got some spectacular racing. It's been a great season so far for the Nationwide Series. Join us at the track, nascar.com slash tickets. Those events upcoming on the ESPN Family of Networks. Going to be five laps to go when they come to the stripe, Dave. Mike Beam knows that there's just five laps left. And this morning when you and I talked, I said, what if uh, something happens to Kurt and you need another drafting partner? You mentioned the 87 of Nemechek. What will the two of them be able to do at the end, Mike? Well, you know, with Austin helping Dale, you know, it's going to be fun. I mean, you know, it's going to be uh, really exciting for the fans, you know. Joe, he's, you know, we've been kind of helping each other anyway all year. It's great great teammate you know to have and uh it just it's worked out really well to have his experience and you know so it's exciting you know i'm really happy for this monster energy so we owe you know brand new car of course and so you know everyone's worked really hard on it the shop and i gotta thank them and you know john dysinger and his music group so we'll see what happens it's uh it's good fun, I'll tell you that. You know, just uh, hopefully everybody's safe here and we can get out of here and win another one. Kyle Busch Motorsports looking for two in a row. Mike? And Nemco Motorsports looking to pull off the upset. Crew Chief Gary Cogswell, you elected not to bring him down pit lane. I would assume you're, you're looking pretty good from here, fuel-wise, tire-wise, but what are you concerned with? I'm not concerned with anything here. You know, our tires are good. The, the good years here, they just, the wear is so awesome. Uh, I'll tell you, the biggest thing we got going for us is we have the man driving that car, and he knows what he's doing. We got a great team here. We're, we're such an underdog here. You know, we're, we don't have near the funding of the cars we're running with. We only got a couple guys in the shop, but everybody here believes in Joe. That's why we're running where we are. That determination could go a long way, Alan. Trying to pull off the upset today is Joe Nemechek. Yeah, Joe, I got a lot of confidence in Joe, too. I was lucky enough to have him in my Sprint Cup car for a couple of seasons and won a race with him. And he is the man. He can get the job done, especially here. If you remember this race one year ago, he nearly won it. He was involved in the mix of leaders at the last set of restarts in the green-white checkers, and he knows how to get it done. He might win this one. Update on the Childress teams, Doc. Yeah, Austin Dillon told me this morning, Alan, his favorite Talladega memory, 2010. He was 10 years old, sitting, or 2000, rather, sitting on his grandmother's sofa. His grandmother, Judy Childress, wife of Richard Childress, watching Dale Earnhardt Sr. come from 18th to win at Talladega. It won't be his final win. He said, you know, I had no idea it would be 12 years later, and I would be the guy sitting in a seat trying to take granddaddy's car number three back to victory. And oh, by the way, he's going to hook up with Dale Jr. to try to win it. There'll be four laps to go. They waved off the restart last time because they didn't have a couple of people in the right place in the restart order. So four laps to go. Kyle Busch inside lane. Earnhardt Jr. outside lane. How's it going to shake out? Joey Logano with a high lane run. Earnhardt Jr. up to block. It may not be enough. Mike Jr. did all he could do, just shy of wrecking the field. Yeah, Austin Dillon couldn't stay on the bumper at Jr. Got him in trouble. Might not be all lost yet, though. Danica Patrick picks up the draft with Jr. 
Kyle Busch, Joni Nemechek, Kevin Harvick, Brad Keselowski, oh, oh. trouble, turn three. Jeffrey Earnhardt on the 15 with a nice save, more contact. Uh -oh. Mike Wallace, zero one. Under the spinning air mirror there. Caution's out, caution's out, you're. Elliot Sadler did an incredible job to miss that crash. Four car was Danny Eflin. Somehow, only two cars involved in that. Get it rolling here for Candy. I thought for sure Sadler was involved. Good work, track yeah. cars broke or something. Chain reaction things that contact the head in the pack, set things off behind it. Uh, yeah, it's Jeffrey Arnard trying to be aggressive here at the end, but uh, really wasn't anywhere for him to go right then. That started things stacking up. You can see Kenny Wallace and Mike Wallace actually got together down there. And Mike got down on the apron, the flat part yeah. of the racetrack. You can see you were right, Andy. Elliot Sadler did do a nice job of missing that. See, as Kenny comes down here in the 99, I don't think he had any idea that Mike was there. Boy, look at look at Sadler. Wow, what a job. You see right there. Got the 15 way, way, way up high. I'll spin it behind us here. Just keep on going. Just keep on coming here. about Sadler and the potential for giving up a bunch of points. That saved some right there. Sure did. That was skill, too. I mean, he was so close to being in that. The movie so, made to, to avoid it almost put him straight in the wall, then he was able to get it off the wall. And you're not going to believe this. Was it just <laughs> a little while ago I wrote off Kurt Busch's chances for the day? And you were the one saying don't write him off. Two cautions, two free passes in a row. There he goes, back onto the lead lap. Well, he's going to have a green-white checker to see how far he can get up through there. At least one. At least one, yeah. Maybe two. So if you're new to NASCAR, in an effort to give race fans a finish not under the caution flag, but a green flag finish, if the race reaches its scheduled conclusion under the caution flag, NASCAR will make up to three attempts at a green-white checker finish. Restart the race, race a lap, show the white flag starting the last lap of the race, and then the next flag finishes it. If it's a caution flag, the field is frozen, the race is over, or they get to the checkered flag. If a yellow flag comes out before they get to the white flag, they line them all up and do it again up to a third time. Last year, this race, two green-white checker attempts were required to finish it out. Hard to believe it's been 18 races since we've had one in the Nationwide Series. Yep. Well, Kevin Harvick's going to be behind Joe Nemechek for this restart, Doc. Let's find out for Ernie Cope. Uh, Ernie, what's Kevin's plan here? On the, Who does he go with? Uh, it looks like the 54 and the 87 switch, so that leaves us behind the 87. So he's going to go with Nemechek? Yes. Can he win it? Yeah, I believe he can. Ernie Cope, you know, man, a few words, but he believes that this guy can get it done. Alan? So Ernie Cope's reference to the 54 and 87 switching, Kyle Busch was the race leader and has the choice of which lane to restart in. Mm -hmm. He's going to plan on taking that option to the outside, get a good start. Nemechek is going to let him get back in front of him, and they're teamed up again. That's what I'm guessing. Let's see what Harvick and Brad Keselowski try to do about that. Yeah, let's see what the refs have to do. Oh, boy. Twenty-six cars on the lead lap to the final laps.
Kevin Harvick's trying to keep that from happening because he's pushing Nemechek hard, won't let the 54 get back in front of him. Yeah, I watched that restart, and I mean, well before they got to the line, Harvick was attached to the rear bumper of that 87. So now Kyle Busch's hopes reside with Brad Keselowski and his ability to push. Well, he's getting a nice push from him. Uh -oh, oh, trouble. trouble. Harvick's around. Oh, got spun on the back stretch by the 43. How many is it going to collect? Oh, what a vicious crash. Eric McClure. Accident that began at the front of the pack, jockeying for position to race for the win. Ends with some heavily damaged cars scattered across turn three. Taylor Malsom. It was a vicious hit by Eric McClure there. Yes, it was. Robert Richardson, 23. Harvick's car sitting back there as well. Yeah, Harvick was out of his car. There's a net out. That's what's so frustrating about this racing is you get yourself all day long, you positioned yourself, get yourself out of trouble, and it just gets so ramped up. Just one bump too hard by someone. You got so many lines that have a different momentum, and the holes close up so quickly. Nobody willing to give any when it's this close to the end. Go ahead. Seven car rejoins the race. You saw Brad Keselowski's car sitting on the pit lane, getting attention. Robert Richardson. I'll tell you just how hard that was for him. See the damage on that right front. Mm. He's okay. He didn't jump out though. Takes a little while to get your wits about you. And when you hit something like that, yeah, you can see they jammed it all back and get your feet in there, your legs, your knees. Red flag the race. Right there on the first part of the triangle on the front straightaway is where all the leaders are parked. As the work continues at the accident scene over in turn number three. So the red flag is out in the middle of the first attempt at a green white checker finish, a multi car accident. Over in turn number three at the end of the back stretch, Austin Dillon's car with damage. But the bulk of the concern remains focused around the Eric McClure car. After the hard, hard crash he took to that inside wall. The safety workers there, well trained, and uh, doing their doing their job. And of course, any update that we get, we'll pass along to you as soon as possible. NASCAR and these safety teams have done such a tremendous job over the years of gaining ideas of how to handle these situations better. They've got great equipment, too. Yeah. They can cut that roof off the car, so if he is injured, they can get him out without causing any more injury. So the drivers are stopped here that are continuing in the race. And know they have uh, another green-white checker attempt to go. Two 
to decide who's going to win. What goes through your mind? As you're sitting there, just want to get it over now. But as they get back, they're going to go just as hard at it as what they were right then. You know, you're, you feel fortunate that you've been able to make it and get through to, to this point. But now it's, it's really about, okay, I've got to this point. Let's make the most of it. See, NASCAR does a good job, too, now. It's extremely hot in these race cars. You've been out there in this 85-degree temperature, so they're getting all of these drivers some water. There are the eight drivers involved in the accident. All of those drivers have either driven their cars away, as in the case of Patrick and uh, Keselowski, or climbed from their machines if they were unable to continue, except the Eric McClure machine, which you see the work continuing around. So while they continue to work that scene over there in turn number three, and we continue to show concern and watch the situation and, and pay attention. Andy, you've been a crew chief, you've been a team owner. This from NASCAR, they, they report to us that Eric McClure has been talking to the medical staff over at the accident scene. So and that is certainly the roof back too, so. a good bit of news. And a lot better access to Eric now. That in itself, the fact that they would peel the roof back is, is simply to give the safety workers more room to maneuver and in any kind of a situation. I mean, he took a hard hit to that inside wall. There would be stabilizing of his spine and neck to try and take him out of that car straight up and make sure that there are no injuries or further injuries in that area. But again, NASCAR just uh, uh, informing us that McClure is talking or has talked to the medical workers over there in turn number three. It's just so much less risky by taking that roof, peeling it back, even though they probably don't know uh, the extent of any injuries here, but they're just, it's so much less risky to pull any driver out of the car without having to come through that small window opening. These window openings are fairly small. Well, we talk all the time about the safety of these new cars, of uh, everything that, that's involved as far as the Hans device and uh, the shoulder harness, the seat belts, everything that, that the drivers now have uh, inside of these cars. But you still have to realize you're traveling well over 170 miles an hour at this racetrack. Doc, you're well familiar with the medical procedures and all of the safety work that goes on in this situation. Unfortunately, I am, Alan, and uh, you explained it very well. I mean, they typically want to be very, very deliberate and take their time. You want to get the roof of the car off so you can get to the driver and stabilize the neck and spine. Great to hear the news that you had reported a moment ago that uh, Eric McClure had spoken uh, with the NASCAR and the safety people at the scene. I spoke to uh, Wes Ward, the crew chief for Eric McClure, a moment ago as he was walking or headed that way, and Wes said none of the crew, him, none of the crew had heard anything on the radio, and they surmised the radio wires probably snapped and were torn with that violent impact, so they were very concerned and glad to hear that Eric is communicating. Now, uh, again, very, very deliberate. These NASCAR safety people you see working on the car here train almost once a week. In fact, one of the training sites is right here at Talladega off the back straightaway. They get cars, that, and they cut the roofs off. They practice taking drivers out on a backboard, strapping them down, uh, providing every delicate touch they can to get them out of the car to do no harm prior to getting them evaluated. That's exactly what they're doing doing right now with Eric McClure. All right, Doc, thanks. And we continue to monitor the scene over inside turn number three as this race sits under the red flag. Just joining us, a multi-car accident on the back straightaway as the race had just restarted for a green-white checker two-lap sprint to the finish. Contact in the pack sent cars careening out of control and a hard crash there involving Eric McClure. And that is where the attention is focused. All other drivers have 
climb from their cars. Kevin Harvick just been released from the medical center. And in these situations, Doc talked about uh, the, the training that the personnel received. NASCAR sends an advanced team into town and all the care is coordinated uh, through the racetrack with all of the local hospitals and the best uh, trauma units and so on, all coordinated up uh, to provide the best possible care for these drivers in the event of a situation like this. Kevin Harvick from the Medical Center with Mike Massaro. As we do, we're checking in at the Medical Center. Uh, Kevin Harvick has just been released. He was asking to see a replay here. Not really sure what happened. I just know I got hit from behind. Um, you know, I was offset a little bit there. Uh, just trying to push the 40 or 87 and just got turned around. So just part of it. I mean, you hate it for everybody at Armour and RCR for having to fix the car, but that's Talladega, man. Heavy lick. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Right. Kevin Harvick, okay. That's the good news. Mike, thanks. That's Taylor Malsom behind Harvick, also involved in the crash and obviously released from the medical center. You saw that uh, yellow backboard with the uh, areas on it for stabilizing the head and so on. And the safety workers continue attending to Eric McClure. Another of the drivers involved in the accident with Mike. Taylor Malsom, uh, lots of cars, lots of heavy licks. What did you see? Uh, all I saw was Kevin come in front of me, and I hit him, and then tried to get around the rest of that we were going to be okay, and then the 7 came up and got us again and just took out the front end. Uh, I don't know what we could do, just pack racing, you know. Um, real happy that GLA guys admit, brought me a good car. We run, I thought we could finish top 10 today easily, but uh, it wasn't meant to be. I've never finished a race here and kept the street going, I guess. This race reminiscent of what we saw in February at Daytona. Why is it that we see so many cautions at the end of these restricted plate races? Uh, I think now with the temperatures getting so hot in the engines, you just kind of waited around all race, and you could just push those last two laps and just your motor blew, your motor blew, and uh, I think that's what was everyone just racing so hard. Uh, to get the win and you know just so close com competition out here in the nationwide series and you know, it's a lot of fun but sucks we to end up on the hook taylor malson another one taken out in that crash there you see the Work continuing over inside of turn number three. And Eric McClure being assisted from that race car. has had his share of uh, tough breaks. It was a year ago last week that his home and many in his hometown in southwestern Virginia were damaged by a series of tornadoes that came through. Of course, his family with a long history in racing, the Morgan McClure Racing Team with much success here at Talladega, Daytona 500 wins, so on. And again, we'll continue to provide you any update we're able to on McClure's condition as soon as we possibly can. It's going to take a little while now to clean up all this mess on the back straightaway before they can take the red flag off. See the rollbacks coming to pick up all the cars. One thing the rest of these cars would worry about a little bit is they when they shut these cars off and lose a little bit of water out of that overflow. Sometimes they'll spew a little water, but uh, should be okay with only just a couple laps to go. I don't think they care too much about how much they have in there. No, I don't think they're worried about that point. Should be able to push as much as they, they want to from this point forward. For some, we're going to have to continue to deal with some damage that they have to their cars. Others are just uh, ready to kind of get this over with you. You got to this point, you're sitting in there, you're just hot, you're sweating, just ready to, to make it happen and hope that everybody's okay. All right, so with respect to the fact that 
We only have very preliminary word about the condition of Eric McClure. We want to go back and take one look at what happened that set off this multi-car accident headed to turn three on the back straightaway. See, it looked like a net had made a move to try to go up the middle. Yeah, it looked like he was getting a push and he was going to try to, to make this happen. That hole to closed go up. As you can see, as Kyle Busch went over, Brad Keselowski tried to go over. That was Joey Logano that was behind the net. Yeah, it's like I said, everybody's trying to go to the front, and those holes close up so quickly. And you can see the safer barrier deflect tremendously when Eric McClure hit it. Thank God it was there. Yes. You can see just past this, there is no safer bearing. All that is is just a product of, of the racing, the closeness, and, and getting time to try to win or make as many positions as you possibly can. McClure is going to be transported to the University of Alabama Birmingham Medical Center for further treatment and again any update that we have we will pass along as soon as possible So we continue to monitor the situation. Any information we have, we provide it as soon as possible. And we still have to finish the race here at Talladega. We're coming back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The NASCAR Nationwide Series race at Talladega Super Speedway is under the red flag after a multi-car accident headed toward turn number three damaging several cars and damaging the safer barrier as well. After a heavy impact to that barrier, involving a couple of drivers, including Eric McClure, who has been assisted from his car and is going to be transported to a hospital in Birmingham for further evaluation and treatment. We continue to monitor and we'll provide you any information as soon as we possibly can. So we still have to finish the race. And while we remain concerned about Eric McClure, they're going to finish the race. And if you are a driver, Dale, you've been in this situation before. You're sitting down there strapped in one of those race cars. You might have seen the replay on the big screen, or you might have seen it in front of you out your windshield. And now you're going to go back racing again, bumper to bumper, door to door at 190 miles an hour. How do you do it? Well, it, it, and w without sounding too callous, I mean, you're here as a competitor, and that's what you do. And every driver goes into these races with the idea that things may happen, but you have that mental concept that it's not going to happen to you. And you, you wish and hope the very best for people that are involved in accidents but you're still sitting there this race is going to finish and you have to get your mind back right and and do the job that you came here to do and and uh, finish this off and when we go back to racing it, you might would think that it would calm things down but i've seen the racing be just as wild uh as as what we saw there uh, whenever they go back because that's what you do you compete and uh, you have to continue to do that yeah as a crew chief or an owner you're down there well, you, know, you want to refocus, try to get your driver focused on what's left. We still, like you said, we got a race to finish and try to get them focused. Uh, just there's nothing you can do. Uh, this is, this happened. It's part of the deal. Everybody knows that it's a, you know, kind of a risky sport, but you got to get focused back on the task at hand. That's to win this race. And to do that, there'll be one, perhaps as much as a second, green-white checker finish still to come. Repairs continuing on the safer barrier on the back stretch inside wall. Before the field of cars will be fired up and sent back under the caution flag and then eventually the green flag to decide the race. See those big blocks of foam? Something designed by the 
folks out at the University of Nebraska, the Midwest Center for Roadside Safety, Dr. Dean, Dean Sicking and his folks, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, a driving force initially behind it, and uh, NASCAR certainly jumping on board, and so much research has gone into designing these for different types of race cars, different types of racetracks, different locations on racetracks, and it's certainly been one of the great safety advancements in the sport. I donated a car at the beginning of this project when they were developing this wall. I donated one of our cup cars to, I thought they were going to test the car. I didn't realize they were testing the wall, but I got it back. <laughs> they had run it into the wall at about 170 miles an hour to see how these walls would hold up, and you can see that they've done a really good job in the development of this, and they've got all these different sized blocks so they can repair this wall and make it safe again yeah you know and originally this was all designed for the outside uh, for the walls that you see that uh, are along the, the outer part of the the racing surface but as things evolved you realize there's a lot of places that as drivers and, and cars you crash and so they needed to be put in the other areas and the tracks and NASCAR have done a tremendous job in covering the majority of those places so the cars have been fired back up you hear the red flag being withdrawn, the yellow flag being displayed, meaning those teams with cars on the pit lane needing to do work on them can now resume the work on the cars, not allowed to work on them under the red flag. And as the field rolls off, we go to Dr. Jerry Punch. Back at the care center, Michael Annette walking out. Uh, first of all, Michael, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Just uh, disappointed running the top five there on that, that green-white checkered restart. and. We were uh, we were smart and played it played it safe all day and then uh, had a really good push and tried to shoot the middle and um, you know when you get a push like that you got to do something with it if you hit the brakes you get turned and it you know and, and that just a uh, accordion effect so I stayed in it had a hole there and it shut and couldn't really uh, at that point we were we were in the hole and couldn't really do anything about it. You were in the medical center and some of Eric McClure's family was around. Any word get to you on his status? Not really. Um, we were in the ambulance and saw him obviously uh, get cut out of the car and, and he was talking. So, uh, um, you know, I think he probably just hit his head a little bit. And, and uh, you know, they're definitely worried about our safety and just taking all the precautions they need to. All right, Michael and Eth, uh, and we're waiting for some official reports uh, on the Eric McClure situation, guys. Doc, thanks. You heard Michael Annette's description of the accident. He went uh, for that hole three wide with a big push in the draft from Joey Logano. Yeah, and he did have a big run. Uh, the problem was as Kyle Busch was getting a push from Brad Keselowski, Brad came over to, to keep that, but Kyle was clear of any cars, but it did uh, kind of run a net out of room there. It's just one of the, the racing things that happened in these packs. Brad Kozlowski driving his car back to the pit lane and now back onto the racetrack and trying to catch up to the tail end of the field. Elliot Sadler, championship leader, did uh, a lot of time up at the front of the pack. You see the damage to the nose that dropped him back into the field. He's trying to struggle to the finish of this race and try and keep from giving up a chunk of points to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the championship. One of the big advantages of having a track this size is you got a lot of time to work on the car while the field is under caution. Right now, the pace car is just in the middle of three and four, so they still have quite a bit of time to make some repairs here. We're good, plenty of time. Still another 45 seconds. They may need a couple of days on that one, though. Yeah, yeah they might need a little bit more. Yeah. But they can help it a lot. They, they can get this thing where it'll make a couple laps pretty good. Yeah, they've actually done a lot from what we saw earlier whenever, you know, the splitter was way, way up in the air. They, they've improved that some and, and certainly uh, taken a lot of tape and improved some of the other areas. Yeah, this is not from this last accident. This would happen earlier, quite a few laps earlier. Let's check in with Jamie. Well, Adam Stevens, crew chief for the 18 and Joey Logano, you guys are sitting third right now. What is your game plan? Because we know his running partner has been on pit road a lot. Well, the uh, GameStop Toyota has been really fast all day and stable. Joey's done a great job staying patient. To be honest, we started with uh, our A plan to work with the two, moved on to our B plan. Now we're on our C plan to work with Kyle, our old uh, cup teammate and former uh, nationwide teammate. And, uh, you know, with this short amount of laps left, watching the gauges is really out the window. It's all about just getting to the front and making your move in the tri-oval. And last week it was the 18 car that got beat by the 54. Perhaps it'll flip today, Dave. 
Well, the five cars still looking strong out there. May have a new advocate in uh, someone we didn't expect to see back up at the front, Kurt Busch. He's back. You talked with his crew chief, Nick Harrison. Does uh, Junior need the help from Kurt, or can he do it on his own? Uh, I don't think we can do it on our own. Everybody's cooled off now. Uh, we didn't get a good restart there. Uh, Austin got to running, running into the back of him, didn't stay against him, and they didn't get a good run going there, so we lost a lot of spots there. But, hey, he's a rookie. He's learning. He's doing a, a heck of a job today, and, uh, you know, he'll learn. But uh, that Hellman Chevrolet's been good all day long, but we done lost our track position here, and we're not giving up. And uh, Kirk's back there, and hopefully we can get pushed by them guys. Got the veteran behind him now. And the, uh, the, the upshot of the one car, Nick Harrison told me they've got their cooling back. Kurt should be able to help as much as possible toward the end here. Look for that combo to work out. Well, let's touch on what uh, Pop Fury just said there about cooling. All these cars just sat for 19 minutes under the red flag. We're going to see everybody just push for the final two laps? Oh, yeah. They're, you're not going to see anybody try to get any air these last couple laps because it doesn't matter. Okay, well, you did one less thing for the driver to do. have to look at a gauge, but he's got about 10 other <laughs> things that are going to happen here. He'll be busy. Brad Kozlowski's got some Take trolls right to the garage. under yeah. the back of that 22 car. That uh, track bar is the... It's a rod that keeps the rear end centered in the car, and that thing looks like it's broke. So he will come out of the race, and that's going to put us down to 19 cars on the lead lap. Second attempt at a green-white checker finish. Kyle Busch, Joe Nemechek to the green. And Dylan, that three had a lot of damage to his car, but elected to stay out on the racetrack. Joey Logano pushes Kyle Busch clear. Cole Witt in the 88 with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the six. Oh, oh there's more trouble. Sam Hornis Jr. in the 12. What a save. Nemechek is damaged, though. Jr. just went below the yellow line just to miss all of that. Yeah, a lot of damage for Nemechek. Cole Witt sitting in a pretty good spot here with Ricky Stenhouse pushing on him. Defending winner of this race with a man who's finished no worse than third in three tries pushing him in the draft. A youngster, Cole Witt, in his first Talladega try in the 88. Stenhouse Jr., the defending champ in the six. White flag, last lap of the race. Who's going to get back first and win it? With you, white flag, one more. Has Cole Witt learned enough today to know exactly where to make this move? And remember Daytona last quarter, that car in front got awfully wide. And will Joey Logano be satisfied to push Kyle Busch to a win? I don't think I would. Remember at Talladega, the finish line is not in the center of the trioval. It's past that final corner. So now still one more turn to go. Logano's got a little space here to try to make a move. Here comes the move. Logano to the outside. Now that took some patience for him to wait that long to make that move. That's perfection at his best right there. He stayed on him to get a little separation between the 88 and the 6, and that allowed him to pull out and make the Woo! move. That was awesome. Hell of a job, guys. Wow, that's cool. That's really cool. Good job. I think they should be telling their driver that. Yeah. I know the crew gave him a great car, but that was the driver. Joey Logano, third, second, and second. The last three years here. This time, yep, he, average. he made the move. He made the slingshot to the finish line and got Kyle Busch by 34 one-thousandths of a second. Another Talladega race with a last lap pass for the win. By that much. Great finish. Wow. Well, if you didn't.
didn't melt that engine down in the draft of the race. He's going <laughs> to melt it down in the victory celebration now. Celebration for the 18 team, Jamie. It is. Adam Stevens just talked to him moments ago last week. You guys were oh so close, but you came out in second. This week, different story. How exciting is this to win at Talladega? It's great. I tell you, uh, we're blessed to have Joey Logano drive our cars. He is the master on these play tracks. And here at Talladega, I mean, his worst finish has been third in this nationwide series. It's incredible. Um, the game stop Toyota was good all day, and we've been strong all year. We've led a lot of laps. Um, and to get back in victory lane here at Talladega is great. Adam Stevens is going to go home to his brand new baby boy. He was born on Tuesday. Alan? Very nice. Very nice. Now think about last week at Richmond, we had a short track race, right? We had Kurt Busch in the Kyle Busch 54, Denny Hamlin in the Joe Gibbs 18, side by side to the finish with Kurt Busch winning by a skosh. One week later, it's Joey Logano in the Gibbs 18, Kyle Busch in the Kyle Busch 54, came to the finish. This time the 18 got him by a skosh. Sam Hornish's car, all torn up. Finished 12th. See, Danica's, Danica's got damage. More damage than what she sustained in that previous caution. See what's happening to them here. While we were watching the race for the win, this happened. Whoops. Looks like Sam ran Danica out of room. Maybe she didn't like that. I didn't think much Ow. of that. get her a trip to the NASCAR trailer. I think Sam's going to be happy with that. No. Yeah, probably get a visit from Sam, too. Well, we talked about Talladega being a day of big stress for the drivers. Some of those stresses coming out in that closing laps. No stress for Joey Logano. Celebrating a Talladega win, finally. Well, this morning, Joey was talking about his amazing average here, and he said, yeah, but that doesn't include a win. This time it does. How did you wrap your head around sitting there for 20 minutes? and then getting yourself back together to get the win. Oh, man. I, we got just right, right position. You know, uh, you got to position yourself for the end of these things. And I thought we weren't in the right position there for a while, uh, the restart before the last one. We were like sixth or seventh, and I was like, man, that's not where we need to be. Then that wreck happened from third. I'm like, okay, Kyle's good. I can just keep ahead of him. Uh, fortunate the guys behind us didn't, didn't make a run on us. And uh, last lap pass, just had to do it at the right time. So Kyle knew it was coming. He knew he knew it was coming. But uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, 200 Toyota win, that's huge. Uh, I think GameStop, uh, Max Payne 3 on the hood there. Guys give me a great car. This is, uh, it's cool to win super speedway races. It's just, you never know what's gonna happen. And you get them right at the last second, those are the most exciting ones. What is it like for a driver, 90 degrees today, I can see you're soaking wet to sit there and stay patient this whole race to the end. That's all the Coca-Cola on me, they spray. <laughs> that's all that is. But uh, no, it was hot, it was sitting in a red flag is when you start steaming, but uh, you know, stay focused and uh, you know, get the eye on the prize. Indication for tomorrow? Yes, for sure. Look out, Joey Logano wants to do the double this weekend. Alan? All right, Jamie, thanks. And the final finishing order shuffled around a little bit on that last lap. A couple of key things to point out. Stenhouse Jr. got third. Sadler came back for 10th. Wow, that's a big comeback for Elliott Sadler. He lost a points lead, but he stayed pretty close. See, Kirk Bush finished sixth after all of them. Everything he went through today. Alan, I counted him out twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I sure did. Came back for six. Kenny Wallace in the top ten. Yep. Back here's where all the action was. With Sam Hornish and Danica Patrick still finishing the top 15. Last on the lead lap, Brad Kozlowski in 20th place. He did limp around the final couple laps, even with that rear end flopping around inside the car. Kevin Harvick. Some of the other drivers taken out in the accident. And some of those who failed to finish today. Joanna Long had the engine problem early in the race. And some of the drivers that went out early in the event. Reminder, the Summit Racing Equipment and HRA Southern Nationals qualifying 7 Eastern tonight over on ESPN2. The finals for the Southern Nationals tomorrow at 7 Eastern on ESPN2.
Then the NASCAR Nationwide Series moves from Talladega to Darlington next Friday night, 6.30 Eastern ESPN2. That is going to be a great race at NASCAR's most difficult track. Championship standings. Stenhouse squeezing in front of Sadler as we move on to Darlington next week. The last update we have from NASCAR is that Eric McClure is being transported to the UAB Birmingham Medical Center for further evaluation and treatment. That's the last update that uh, we have. Our concerns with him, our congratulations to Joey Logano. World news or local news, except on the West Coast, coming up next. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC.